Hello, my beautiful badgers, Messi Coda back again with another live dip interview. I'm joined on my virtual sofa by Tim Bergholz, aka Champfazon, who is at Crytek, Ubisoft, Digital Extremes, and makes those wonderful guns over on the Unity Asset Store. We're going to be talking about art, life, advice, tips, games, movies, you name it. Sit back, enjoy, and I'll see you all in a second. So everyone's sitting at home in front of your Amazon mirrors, your Google Watches, your Alexa TVs, and your fancy microwave computers. Give a warm and messy welcome to Zone, Tim. Now, you've got three different, your Tim, Zone, and your Discord. Uh, you've got another name on there as well, which confused me. Which which are we going to call you? Master Node? The, the King of 3D? His Royal Highness? <laughs> Um, I would say whatever whatever uh, works for you, but uh, I always like to introduce myself as Tim from Chamfer Zone I in like my uh, branding, tutorials. I'm Tim from Chamfer Zone because nobody knows how to pronounce my last name. You know, like it's Bergholz. So, uh... so that's you know that's uh, something that. I always have to pronounce letter by letter over here, so that's perfectly fine. And that's why I'm glad my parents gave me a very short name that is also <laughs> not necessarily German. Three letters, so I'm Tim from Chamfer Zone, and that works. It does work. <laughs> is Tim the, the, your full name then on your birth certificate? It's Tim. It's not like Tim yeah. Fay or anything like that. No, it's uh, just him. No second names or anything like that. Uh, wow. Uh, it's, uh, every now and again, your microphone uh, pops in. I don't, I don't know if you've got a loose oh. wire or something. Um, oh, ho really? Yeah, hopefully you're, you, you're not going to electrocute yourself. I'm starting to get a little bit worried for you there. Oh, that sucks. Um... <laughs> what if you get electrocuted live on the stream? That would be distressing. We've got a few Canadians in the chat, by the way. You got it excited at the sound of the hearing the word Toronto, no doubt. And Golami has uh, feel, believes that you should be known as his royal freshness, which I think is awesome. <laughs> well, um, if anyone new in the chat who who's come over from Tim's amazing community, welcome along. If you if you're wondering what we do here, every now and again we interview amazingly beautiful people like Tim from Chamfer Zone. Uh, and we also do tutorials occasionally, and sometimes we play games and be silly, which is mostly we get drunk and, and talk rubbish to each other. Um, also not allowed. Um, or is, 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 I keep forgetting that Canadians are very territorial, aren't they, Tim? Like certain parts of Canada don't like other parts of Canada. How did you find going over there dealing with all of the, in, the complex interior politics of Canadian life? Um, to be honest with you, uh, like the whole politics part, wait, wait a second, before I continue, like, is my microphone still, uh, fucked up? You can't <laughs> say fudge or bugger. It's... <laughs> oh. oh, it's, ah, man, it's, it's my first time on, on Twitch. I'm sorry. The small children now crying in the street. Ah. Mommy! Mommy, what did the bad man say? <laughs> I, I should have considered my words uh, more carefully. Damn it. I love it. Well, <laughs> apologies. It's okay, you're German. It's, it's allowed. You, the, uh, in, in does, the... does Twitch have some sort of like automatic uh, filter software that picks up on? Nah, it says uh, when, when I stick it on YouTube afterwards, YouTube likes to complain. Oh, yeah, you know really? what you, you know what ah. YouTube's like. Uh, yeah, it's very gets well, very sensitive with its advertisers. But um, maybe, maybe <laughs> your, your microphone sounds good. But in England, we say "pardon my French" when we swear. Pardon my French. Yeah, mate. yeah. Because because yeah. uh, because we're just used to you know French being a language that nobody talks to unless talks about unless they're, they're you know doing something they shouldn't. So whenever we swear, we say pardon my French. What do you say in Germany when you swear? Like you know, pardon my pardon my English. Um, 
I don't think we have any apologies uh, <laughs> yeah, for swearing to it. begin with. So it. there's no need to apologize. Just go straight. Exactly. Say it's, it's, say what you feel. Straight straightforward. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, the Canadians are. There's always this meme with like, uh, "Sorry," you probably heard it, right? Yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. Is it really? Because the Canadians it, I've met are not apologetic. They're, they're evil people. The Canadians, aren't you? I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I. You know, there's so many memes about countries and places, and I mean, there's always like a little bit of a grain of salt uh, of truth to it. I would say, but. Overall, since you were asking about uh, Canada, um, I find Canadian politics uh, is, is such a boring matter, you know, that <laughs> I, I haven't really, you know, it's not like I'm paying attention to anything uh, much that's going on here. The, I, I know that, like, we got Quebec uh, and then we got sort of like the rest of Canada. And I, as far as I remember, the Quebecians were trying to, they almost, uh, like they had some sort of like a vote. Uh, I think it was in the 70s or so when they were voting to split uh, from Canada, like officially to become their own country or something like that. Wow. And Yeah, and I think they, it, it was a really close uh, call on that. <laughs> no, like the no. Scottish independence recently in the UK, but... Uh... But the yeah. Sc Scotland are going to get a second go at it. They're going to get a second crack right. of the whip. Uh, what yes. are you doing in Canada, by the way? People are you know, wondering, what is this beautiful German man doing in hey. sunny Canada, in beautiful, sunny Toronto? Well, yeah, it's been like a, a good 10 years now, um, almost. Like this year, it's going to be 10 years. And I came here to work uh, on video games. And uh, that is uh, sort of like my calling, you know, like uh, working on video games. And uh, I came here to work for Ubisoft Toronto. And they basically hired me uh, when I was still working at Crytek back in the day that, uh, like I said, 10 years ago, um, I was just uh, finishing How Crisis. Yeah, Crisis Two. Like you're familiar with the Crisis. I am. I'm. I'm. I'm, right. I'm, fam I'm familiar with the. the uh, I haven't played them, but I'm. Uh, I, I'm. I'm aware of them. Yeah. Well, let's just say uh, Far Cry is obviously uh, the more famous brand, and it originated at Crytek, right? So, uh, Crytek were the original creators of. Um, Far Cry, and then they sold the rights uh, to Ubisoft at some point. And uh, after that, they had to sort of like come up with a new franchise, and this is how Crisis was born. And uh, probably not their best idea. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not really 100% sure of the reasons why they did that, but. Uh, I think it had something to do with like uh, some financial troubles they were in at that time, and uh, they probably just needed the the money. So that's uh, how it went over to Ubisoft. And uh, but nevertheless, uh, Far Cry One is a Crytek game, and after that followed uh, Crisis and Crisis Two and uh, a couple of other games as well. So Crisis 2 was my first game that I actually worked on. And right after that was finished, um, I was then sort of contacted by Ubisoft and I didn't know a single thing about Toronto. What? First thing they contacted I did you. Was, uh, sorry? They contacted you. You're just sitting there having a, a cup of tea one day yeah. and, and out of the blue... Ubisoft yeah, come exactly. knocking saying so we love I was you. actually awesome. I, I I even know how it worked so some guy uh, like a former uh, colleague because I'm not working at Ubisoft anymore uh, he uh, saw my portfolio which I shared on I believe uh, what is the forum called Mapcore oh I don't know so, that one yeah, I think, wait, let me just double check that. I think is Mapcore, uh, Mapcore, yeah. 
And Mapcore is uh, like a forum for game developers uh, with a strong focus on environment artists and so on. So basically, uh, someone was putting my, uh, like forwarding my stuff that I posted there. And this is how it was seen by Ubisoft. And then I got sort of contacted. So essentially, this is how one thing led to the other. And the uh, first thing I did was I went to Google and I made sure that they don't speak French in Toronto. <laughs> it's like, do they speak French in Toronto? That was the only thing that interested me. It's like, ah, it's English. Okay, I, I know a few English words, so let's do this. <laughs> yeah, Brilliant. Now it's and now it's been 10 years. Uh, it's... I. Uh, I would have not guessed that back then, obviously, but uh, it's been treating me well here and it's a good place. So how long were you at Ubisoft for? Uh, so at Ubisoft, I've been um, pretty much five years. And yeah, I've been working on a Splinter Cell Blacklist. Oh. Uh, that was basically the reason why they, uh, why they needed um, you know, to recruit a whole bunch of people because Ubisoft Toronto was a, a brand new studio in uh, 2010, 2011. And, Ubi uh, and uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist was the first game that they did. So uh, this is uh, how it all pretty much happened that I'm here now. And I was like, oh yeah, I like uh, Splinter Cell. I like uh, Sam Fisher. So, yeah, that was then the next game that I worked on after Crisis 2. So how long did it take for Splinter Cell for the, to, to be developed and, and released from, from when you joined them and this is their first game? Oh, excellent question. Uh, and be <laughs> because I'm so bad with the numbers and things like that, let me check on my LinkedIn where I think I have all this. Uh, so let me see. Well, that's while you're checking, Freshman says Splinter Cell has always been his favorite. Yes, yeah, Splinter Cell Blacklist. Wait, let's see. I think it's as simple as putting it into Google. <laughs> Splinter Cell Blacklist. And how many was it? Was it a massive team of people? Oh, good question. How big were we? Uh, so I think um, probably at the end of the production, maybe uh, like between 300 and 400 people. So, it, which is not like um, like I've seen. Uh, studios that are bigger so but ubisoft toronto has been in the process of growing ever since so by now i don't even know how many they got but i think it's it tripled wow. so i think they maybe it's even more right now they expanded a lot and they got some special deal here with the uh like the ontario um government yeah the government like to give Come, yeah. and, come and bring your businesses here. And yeah, ex <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they got a deal where they are, um, they need to hire a certain amount of people from the fresh from the college. So this is why uh, basically Ubisoft has to grow Ubisoft Toronto over here. And um, that has been happening ever since so they've been growing also yeah wow is that for travis says canada love tax breaks for games and fresh me government grants for game development zap fur tracker is jealous uh it, it's a one good reason to move to canada uh also you'll be closer to fresh me uh won't we fresh mate in chat uh if we move to canada we can all come and stay with you while we go and get jobs at game studios isn't that yep yep he says yes he agrees to it awesome I can't. Um, I can't imagine what it must have felt like to to pick up and move uh, halfway across the world, living in a country where you barely speak the language, to to get thrown straight into a triple uh, A game, a new studio. That it must have been scary because a lot of you know this is the first game of a studio. 
I've seen, you know, sort of you um, studios open up from companies and then they go, actually, it didn't work out. Let's close the studio. In which case you've just picked up your life and taken this massive risk. Were you ever worried, you know, thinking, looking in the mirror, going, what am I doing? Well, you know, to be honest, it, it wasn't really like that because, you know, it's Ubisoft after all, right? So it's not like you really have, uh, it's not like you're, you're moving across the continent to join some random studio. So. And it's great on your CV. Yeah, it's, no, it's been, there were not really many concerns uh, to begin with. I, I always wanted to, to move to, um, let's just say North America, because like Canada was never really on my radar, but uh, little did I know back then that uh, Canada has so many uh, game studios, you know, like uh, if you look at Montreal, they have so many studios over there. It's crazy. They like well, with all these grants, they're taking all the world. And the other good thing, Tim, about moving to Canada is that you didn't have to um, have many Americans near you as well. Isn't that right, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> Well, my wife will not allow us to go to America in case we get shot, which is uh, <laughs> uh, number one rule, is don't go to a country where everyone's walking around with guns. I'm pretty sure it's not like that, but that's the perception that we've got <laughs> in the UK. Yeah, fair enough. No, but uh, like for me, the main uh, reason why um, I guess it didn't really work out with the US uh, ultimately is that like once I gotten the job here, uh, I was actually contacted like half a year later. Uh, once I was already at Ubisoft and I just settled in, uh, I got contacted by, uh, I believe it was Activision. Oh, I've been wow. talking to, Act yeah, I've been talking to Activision a, uh, like a couple times, not just once, I think at least uh, there were four different occasions where I was speaking to Activision, but it never really happened. And uh, so the main thing was that I just got here and obviously I didn't just already want to leave after just getting to uh, Ubisoft for and being there for half a year. I wanted to at least finish uh, uh, the, the first project I've been working on, um, in that case, a Splinter Cell. But so the main issue that I have uh, with the US is that uh, for someone coming from Europe and there might be some special exceptions when you're from the UK, uh, but in, in my case, or I, I think it's like a general thing, you have to wait uh, from what I heard like one of my buddies, he's been waiting for seven years to get what? his damn green card. Wow. So over here in Canada, you get the permanent residence uh, like really fast in comparison to that. Yeah, it's like, it's like getting a, you get it free with a packet of cereal, don't you, in Canada? It's uh... a... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's all really straightforward over here. And then basically you have your permanent citizenship uh, no, sorry, your your permanent residence card, uh, and it's it's not the citizenship. I just got that, uh, got that confused, but the permanent uh, residence is the equal to having the green card in the U.S. Pretty much. Uh, Wizard and, says he's been seven years. He's been waiting, and he's from the U.K. Yeah, so it's, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. One one of my buddies, he's also from Germany, and he moved to the U.S. And uh, seven years later, I speak to him and it's like, yeah, I'm almost about to get my green card now. Uh, and essentially, you have to, uh, let's say I get hired by a company in the US, uh, then I would have to, like, first of all, make sure everything is like, it's my sort of my dream studio and the dream project that I really see myself uh, working at for the next couple of years to come because you can already sort of take into account that it's going to be uh, like five to seven years uh, till you get that green card. 
And that is the only way that you can then um, also apply to other places, you know? Oh, so uh, see, I don't know much about the restrictions. If you've got the, if you come to America then for the job and you don't have your green card, if you no longer work at that company that you came over for, they kick you out. Is that, is yeah, that how it works? Kicked, ex exactly. They, oh, they wow. kick you straight back to wherever you came from. And uh, so there's also like, of course, the concern that let's say you get hired by a company and then uh, like four years later, they decide like, ah, actually, we are in some uh, in some financial trouble. And uh, this random 3D artist that we hired four years ago, uh, maybe we don't need him anymore. And there you go. So that yeah. is like another obviously like another concern on top of having to wait for so long right yeah i mean that happened to a friend of mine he went to get a job at ea uh and yeah exactly the same concerns it's crazy though i didn't realize they can just kick you out wow canada's sounds more and more attractive uh, uh the more the more we talk about it um as, as long as we stay clear from the french part we're, we're fine um but so Crytek was Crytek. I thought Crytek's in uh, is that in Germany or in Austria? Uh, Crytek. Uh, Crytek is in Germany. Is a German company. So they they're the, they're the Turkish brothers, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, three brothers, uh, Turkish brothers, and they founded. Uh, I I can't even tell you exactly when it when they founded it, but uh, it's it's essentially one of the most successful um, AAA companies, which we don't have many uh, in Germany. I was about um, to say, is it, is it, isn't it your only one or you've got more than, you've got more than Crytek now? It, we have more than Crytek now. I think there's also Ubisoft now um, in not only one place, like they opened up in Berlin Ooh, a couple nice. of years ago. So you, you uh, could go back to Germany and get another job at Ubisoft. Uh, player one. <laughs> well, yeah. To, I, I guess, yeah, that would always be an option. But now I was looking at your, your I'm looking on your website, digital extremes, load of Warframe stuff. Is, is this is this what you're currently working on, or is it this is where you went yeah. after Ubisoft? Uh, so I've been working at uh, digital extremes for another four years, ever when I left Ubisoft. So. It was the same story as with uh, with Ubisoft. I got contacted by Digital Extremes, and I was basically offered uh, to. Well, they wanted to hire me. They are actually not located in Toronto. They are in London, Ontario, which is a bit more south. It's like a two-hour drive from uh, Toronto, and I was. Uh, just working at uh, Ubisoft at that time for five years and I was already considering like maybe I should uh, you know see if there are other options not because I uh, wouldn't like it at Ubisoft but you know I, I always feel like a little bit like uh, after a couple of years I need a bit of a change of scenery itchy feet they, they call it yeah exactly and so then I got contacted by Digital Extremes and they were asking me to work on their uh, new project, which was called The Amazing Eternals. Uh, and it was like a first person shooter, uh, similar to, um, uh, what is the, the famous uh, game from Blizzard? Uh, the one with the, the heroes, uh, first person, uh, over, Overwatch? Overwatch thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Overwatch. So they were working. Yeah, exactly. This is the one. Uh, Amazing Eternals. And it had a similar sort of idea. Wow, it's beautiful. They needed someone to work on the weapons. And I was immediately sold because uh, I've been wanting to work on weapons uh, pretty much throughout my whole career, but I never really got the chance. Like even when I was at Crytek and when I was at uh, Ubisoft, I I barely got to work on weapons. Is that because they saw your portfolio as the environmental artist guy? 
and then you um, got pigeonholed into that into yeah that okay yeah so this is a good question and essentially when you start at a at a game company it's it works usually that way that the weapon artists are the 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 rather senior guys that have been there for uh, like some time you know or at least that's how it was back when i started like when i was at crytek um i started out there uh they needed uh, full hands on deck with the environment team because there's always like a strong demand to get these environments filled with uh, a whole bunch of assets and um these worlds need need to be created you know where weapons is like more like a in in comparison it's like a smaller thing right uh so essentially this is how it happened that i actually got my job at uh, crytek to be working at uh, on environments and as much as i like it and it's good to have this experience i always had this urge to to work on more let's say unique assets so weapons and vehicles has always been the thing that's been on my radar and uh, then at uh, ubisoft uh, there was the situation that certain parts of the game were outsourced uh, i oh, believe wow. even yeah yeah i mean i'm talking about splinter cell in that case so as far as i remember the weapons were actually outsourced so unfortunately i didn't get a chance to work on that but uh, later i sort of like i always wanted to show the you know the art directors like look guys i'm i really want to be working on like this unique stuff uh, yeah the, per so, the personal things the, the... yeah and then they put me in charge to be working on um like a vehicles they call them the hero assets sort of you know like it's the stuff that is supposed to look impressive it's like right the, in the, front of your nose the, the stuff that the camera is is right up to that you see all of the scratches yeah. and the sweat dripping off them and the... exactly so essentially halfway throughout the production of splinter cell i switched then from being an environment artist uh, to working on these uh, hero assets uh, which were like a whole bunch of vehicles and i i absolutely loved it like this is the kind of stuff where i really i didn't mind to stay late you know like working on <laughs> it uh, over time to make sure it's perfect uh, there was no crunch uh, as far as i'm concerned um so but i really yeah this is the stuff these are the vehicles uh and they also needed to be done pretty fast because these were all sort of like for the they changed their mind about the first um the first level in the game and I, as far as i remember the first level was completely redone and they wow. wanted it to be this us army base so they needed all these assets that you're just looking at and i had to really like okay i'm gonna make this i'm gonna make that and uh bam bam uh like really be fast with it so all what? these were actually done in a relatively short amount of time so, so how long would it have taken you to make this transport truck um and how many parts of it would you have reused from other vehicles like you know you made yourself a stock uh, you know like the wheels are probably the same or the bumpers are yeah, the same from other ones. Good, good question um good question like for example open the humvee in another tab and zoom in on the wheels maybe there are some uh or even that one there the the surface air missile oh, okay. there know. might be yeah you might notice like some parts of the wheel that are actually <laughs> sort of like the same but they are still on their own texture so it's not like you just take a one one thing and then you paste it uh because then they would be sharing two textures you know and uh, you ideally you want to have everything sort of like on one texture so that they can also uh, put it into another level uh, and it doesn't load the textures from two assets so you also always want to make sure it's sort of uh 
on its own thing. And I don't really remember, like, uh, in that case, uh, the whether I it's the same tires. Wait, let's see. Uh, yeah, th those those might be unique. But essentially, it what would make sense is to have like a small texture for the tires, you know. Uh, and then you can load those on like a, a smaller texture and then you have the rest of the vehicle. When it comes to you making, because we, we, you touched on having uh, the textures so you don't have to load up unused ones from the previous level. How, were you having to worry about all the optimization stuff or did they have other, you did you hand over and go, here you go, Kenneth, and somebody else optimized all your stuff? To make no, it absolutely not. This this would be um, a deadly sin uh, as a 3D artist, not worrying about performance. Uh, you always want to make sure that uh, performance is sort of like uh, the ultimate goal. You know, so it's it's always like a trade off between performance and making it look as good as it possibly can for what it is. And uh, in that case, we're looking at a, uh, what needs to be considered is that it's a third person uh, game, right? So all these vehicles that you see here have also been built with that in mind. So if you would put those assets into like a first person game, um, it would probably not, not hold up in uh, the kind of quality that you would expect, but in a third person game, it's like the camera is always zoomed out. So these things are always taken into account. And um, obviously this is, this has also been like uh, eight years now since this was all made. So it looks the, nice though, even yeah, eight years thanks. later. So the, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things to take into account, but uh, performance needs always to come uh, as a very high. Uh, so were you having to do like, uh, like did they give you a, a poly count to, to so say, okay, you can't go beyond this uh, and you need to have so many lords or you need to not use lords for other things. Uh, because I suppose with the hero hero objects you can't because it's always going to be up close to the camera, so nothing can be can be loaded, I suppose. Yeah, well, you know, this is always like a question that gets asked a lot, like, oh, poly count, how much should I uh, have for like uh, this kind of asset and that kind of asset? And uh, it's it's really you you can't just answer it with like a single uh, like. Here's your number. Uh, you have to. It's, it's the answer is thirteen. <laughs> um, basically, the the most important thing is that you know where to put the the details that matter. You know, and make sure that you're not um, like having some sort of like a yeah, a high concentration of polys where it really doesn't make any difference. You want to make sure you make the maximum use out of like the, the curvature, the silhouette, like uh, put your polys there where it matters. And like if you zoom in on like some tiny detail, you, you know, that barely anyone sees, you might just get away by putting that into the, the normal map, you know? So there's always this, there needs to be this balance and you're not given like a specific target necessarily. Even though at Warframe, um, I, I had a target, uh, like we were, if I remember correctly, I think we were not supposed to go over 8K uh, uh, poly um, or edges for any one of the weapons. So this has been, for me, really difficult. Like in the beginning when I joined Warframe because uh, I was like, holy shit, how do you... Oh, sorry. <laughs> more more language. Uh, I was like, oh, uh, hot damn, how do you guys get away with putting all these details uh, into the weapons with such a small budget? 
like 7k 8k yeah, I mean, uh, look, i'm looking at this image now even these bones effect here looks like it's highly yeah, detailed yeah ex exactly and i was so so I didn't finish my story uh, earlier now that I think about it. So I got hired by Digital Extremes to be working on this uh, first person shooter game. And one year after I've been working on that, it got canceled. No. So, so this yeah. beautiful one with the, with the wonderful guns I'm looking at here. Yeah, exactly. And it's a real shame because this game was a lot of fun. I, they had it up for um, open beta at the end. And it was really fun. I enjoyed it. And, you know, it's not always the case that you're working on a game that you actually enjoy playing. But in that case, I was really having a good time. But then they figured that there were too many of these uh, hero shooter games coming out around the same time. And a lot of them uh, were like, essentially, Blizzard took the crown, right, with this uh, Overwatch. And then all the others were sort of seen as like uh, copycats. And uh, there were too many coming out at the same time. And Digital Extremes sort of figured like, okay, uh, we're going to cancel that before we put more money into it. And that was basically the end of this project. And then I came on to Warframe, where all of a sudden I had to work on these third person weapons which not necessarily would have been like a big change for me but the main thing was that everything had to be done in zbrush oh. so yeah and i don't know how familiar you are with uh like these different I, I, modeling i had played with a, a demo you know where they give you like you've got you've got 30 days where well, they used to do it to to use it uh and become addicted and give ah, us okay. all your money uh it was that and mud box I, I it was it was i was tossing between the two uh mud box or zbrush in the end i went with neither uh, and then i set fire to my computer instead but it, it it's a it's a different mentality it's if you've if you've never used so did you did you have to like go to to youtube to watch tutorials and ask your colleagues about it or did they just go here you go you got a day to learn it uh well, so the, yeah, the thing is that for me, ZBrush has always been this monstrosity of a software <laughs> that I absolutely didn't enjoy at all. And in every performance, like, you know, in those companies, if you work as a 3D artist, every year you get a performance review yeah. <laughs> uh, where they basically tell you, like, uh, this is... Um, this is what we like about you and this is uh, where you need to improve and all that stuff. And uh, for me, in every performance review, it was always written, you need to learn how to do the organic uh, modeling, uh, aka learn ZBrush. But since I have been so uh, targeted to being a hard surface artist, which is sort of the complete opposite of doing like organic modeling. I, I didn't have for the longest time the opportunity to actually learn ZBrush. So it was always written in my performance reviews, everything is perfect, but you need to learn ZBrush. And it required for me basically to being forced into that situation uh, where I then found myself in when I was joining, um, when I was all of a sudden in working on Warframe because the other project was cancelled. It's, it's and, amazing that they cancelled it. You're in chat, they're saying, like, if rather than jumping on the bandwagon and going, you know what, we're going to just wipe the coattails and hope for uh, some of that market share. It was actually it it sounds like you're saying that they were like you know what it's not even worth the money it's going to cost us in making this game and the assets it's not even worth the effort given that we might not get any of that traction so let's focus on something else it's uh because it it's completely different mentality to the indie that you see of somebody sitting in their back bedroom going i really like that game i'm gonna make i'm gonna copy it and stick it on steam for five quid 
uh, which is completely different to working at a AAA studio where they're having to employ 200 people or 300 people and make sure that the game sells to pay people's wages. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I mean, I personally feel that uh, they should have given this game uh, more of a chance uh, to prosper. And I think they just, uh, you know, they got too worried about uh, that because they, they've been looking at uh, how many people join this, um, this open uh, beta thing. Uh, it was actually even like you could see it, uh, like people playing it. It was streamed on Twitch and people had a good time with it. But then they were looking at how many people sign up for this in comparison to Warframe. Oh, and wow. since yeah, and since Warframe was already the established thing, they were kind of like concluding, okay, we got uh, we got 95% more people in this week that are interested in continuing to play Warframe than they are in our new game. Uh, and I guess they just, they wanted to avoid like uh, throwing money down some pit and they decided like, okay, let's close that thing down uh, and let's focus with all our resources back on Warframe. So this is basically how that happened. And uh, like I said, there were other games that were of similar nature coming out around the same time. And there were also a lot of people I remember reading back then on different forums like, oh, look, Digital Extremes is now uh, copy and pasting Overwatch. And that is complete garbage, uh, this accusation, because they were already working on this uh, game uh, for like quite some time before I joined and they had that idea for this game before Overwatch was even announced or anything like that oh man but that must, never, that must, that must yeah. hurt though when you hear when you see news like that especially when you say it was such an enjoyable game to play as well yeah it, it was unfortunate I mean it wasn't perfect but uh, at the at the current state where it was when it got cancelled but it had a lot of potential that I could see. And I think it would have been an absolute blast if they continued it. I think it would would have been uh, worthwhile, but, you, and you know. Would, and you wouldn't have had to go back to using ZBrush. You could have stayed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that's that's not the worst thing to happen because uh, that that was sort of like something where then I was finding myself in that situation, like, okay, I guess now uh, comes my time. I have to finally learn that damn software. And uh, it it wasn't easy, but yeah, you see it right there. These are yeah. the high polys for ZBrush. Uh, and yeah, I just had to bite the bullet and learn it. And, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's beautiful stuff with it. Uh, and, then, and then you... you you read Topo down all the way down to to this. Yeah. To to, get that, to to take K, and it's still. I mean, even with the with the stylized art, it really works well. But then I look at this, and it just makes me think that this is a, like a a bum hole with teeth. It's it, this is going to be my <laughs> nightmares. Yeah, it's it, exactly. You're looking at the right thing. This is sort of the mouth of it, uh, and it's. It's like this little creature, and if you look down, um, it's like it has some hands. Yeah, that, right? that freaks yeah. me out. These little, little yeah. evil arms. No, I absolutely adore the um, the art uh, that was shown at uh, Warframe, or that is in the game. You know, like it's still a, it's a highly successful game, and it has its super dedicated uh, fan base, and it's uh, it's been. Uh, like an honor working on this, uh, even though it was never on my radar. But uh, once I saw how dedicated this community is, um, the Warframe fans, and they also have the TennoCon, uh, where they actually meet up uh, once a year. Obviously, at the moment, it's not possible. But uh, so they have fans coming from, I remember being there in London, Ontario, and there, there were people coming from Australia wow. to be in London, Ontario, and witness this TennoCon, and sort of made it uh, 
clear to me that even though it was not necessarily my choice to be working on this game, uh, like how massive that community is and the fan base. So that's what uh, makes everything um, special. And, you know, the, the difference is because it's a free to play game, right? So that means whatever you produce, uh, you will be able to see it shortly after in the game where if you work on like a, your usual game, it takes like uh, three to four years until it gets released. So that's uh, that's like one thing that was always cool uh, working at Warframe. How are they making their money then? Is it is it like in-game purchases to upgrade and stuff? Yeah, it's, uh, it's mostly like uh, cosmetics. Um, so essentially you, you can buy, you know, skins and uh yeah even like not so basically skins are like texture modifications right uh and you can also buy like uh complete like new warframes so basically you you buy like a different character model for your favorite uh, character and you get to completely modify them uh, so there's a lot of ways to sort of like for the player to express themselves in the game. And if you're willing to spend money on it, you can, of course, sort of take the shortcut because <laughs> since it's free to play, uh, you can also unlock everything just by uh, putting the hours in. But a lot of fans just basically, okay, I'm going to buy this and that because I don't want to grind for uh, so and so many hours. Oh, it's lovely, man. I'm just looking at this little video now. I've never played this. I've got friends who keep on telling me that I need to go and play it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I was also like, because, you know, the Warframe for me has always been this thing, like I heard of it, but then I never really looked into it until obviously I, I found myself in the situation <laughs> where... <laughs> okay, I guess now I'm working on Warframe. <laughs> so do they come to you with all the concept art and say, this is the gun you need to do? Or do they say, Tim, what kind of weird gun do you think you would put inside Wolf or um, weird weapon would you put in? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's a mix out of uh, both. It's 50-50, uh, even though for me personally, I've been mostly getting the concepts, but you were always encouraged uh, by the art director or by my art director, because there was not only one, but uh, they had um, they have one specifically for the weapons. Um, I, by the way, I'm saying in past tense uh, because I'm not working at Digital Extremes uh, at the moment, but I I'll talk more about that later. Uh, and essentially, you were always encouraged to do your own concepts, but you also get concepts. Uh, so it's it's a give and take and it's really um it's absolutely fantastic uh, to to be as creative as you possibly can be or want to be so this is something that is like unique for digital extremes uh because like at a place like ubisoft uh like at least in my case and as far as i know you always get your concepts handed over to you by a dedicated concept artist. Oh, you had no creative freedom at all, Ubisoft. No, zero. I mean, <laughs> no, that sounds that sounds bad. <laughs> they used I, to beat you up if you try, if you change anything. How no, dare no. you change this button? Actually, actually, it's not even true what I'm saying. Uh, like at Splinter Cell Blacklist, like some of the vehicles I did were actually uh, my own sort of like take on, uh, let's say, the Humvee. I was like, okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to take this concept and that concept and then I made my own Humvee sort of out of it because you don't get to do like a one-to-one -one copy or else you get uh, trouble, you know? Yeah, exactly. Do uh, you, you're not allowed to, you're allowed to call them by the names or do you have to come up with your own made-up names like a, I don't know, a, a Bumvee or something so you don't get sued? Uh, well, no names. That's That's reserved for like who knows the, the game designers the story writers you know like whoever's in charge to come up with these kind of things um but 
as far as concepts are concerned, uh, usually at like the, let's say the, the really big studios, um, you always have like a dedicated concept artist that will hand you over like a concept and even the concepts themselves, uh, you know, they, they are also being uh, reviewed. Uh, so they make like a whole bunch of different concepts till it's being narrowed down to this one particular concept. So uh, concept art is its own world uh, and department on its own. Do the concept artists ever care about is they is this even physically possible to be made? And, you know, they, they go, if I can draw it, you can make it. And off they go, drawing those uh, crazy things. That Well, that depends strongly on the game. Uh, in case of Warframe, <laughs> physics or uh, anything based on reality uh, tends to have less uh, relevance than... <laughs> Um, on like a game like a Splinter Cell, for example, or Far Cry, uh, where things are supposed to be realistic uh, looking. Uh, at Warframe, you can just basically go ahead and like, you always get away with saying, well, it's alien technology. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's alien, whatever. <laughs> and that's the disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah, it, this gun. It's, it's, this is beautiful. I mean, this this one is. Yeah, thanks. Weird. I'm, I'm really, really like this was probably one of my favorite uh, assets I've been working on at Warframe. Really beautiful design by the concept artist, and I was really uh, happy to be working on that. And how it turned out. The um, the art style and the alien like direction of Warframe. What I'm looking at. Here, reminds me gives me a babylon 5 feel to it i don't know if you ever saw that tv show babylon 5 uh in the 90s 90s sci-fi tv um they, they actually used amigas uh, and uh light um video toasters to, to make that using if you remember it Lightwave. do you remember light yeah uh oh yeah yeah Lightwave. So you're saying they worked in Lightwave? Yeah, or... this is this is this is ah, this okay. is this is how old that TV show was, um, and the, the 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 alien style of it just reminds gives me gives me happy memories as I look at this. So I'm 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 going to want to get myself a copy of Warframe then, seeing as it's free. I can <laughs> afford free. Yeah. No, I, I've, obviously I heard of uh, Babylon 5 and I remember when I was a kid, it was running on TV, but somehow I I never really, uh, it never really opened up for me to, probably because, you know, unlike today where you just go on Netflix and you watch the pilot and all that, like it was already sort of like this thing that was running and I'm like, okay, I, I don't even know what this is all about. <laughs> You've missed it now. You missed the yeah, beginning. Yeah. If you miss one episode of that show, then you've got no idea what's going on. Yeah, exactly. You know, pretty much that. Uh, but yeah, obviously I heard of it. And I also have, I, I know from some of my friends, they, they are big fans of this show. And uh, who knows, maybe one day I'm going to rewatch that. You should do. Uh, they can come up with actually making a, a whole load of new alien weaponry. Uh, based off inspiration. And we've just been raid. Irish John, thank you for the raid. Attack, exclamation mark, attack, exclamation mark, defend in chat. We're talking with Tim from Champervine, Champervine, who's made um, some of your favorite games. Uh, if if you've played Crisis, uh, if you played um, the Splinter Cell, which one is Splinter Cell? Uh, Black, uh, Blacklist. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know what? I played the original Tom Clancy games, and that was, I haven't played any of the others. I played the, I played the first Tom Clancy games, um, and I really, I really need to, to, to revisit them. I'd love them. I'm, I remember when I was in the army, uh, and I was talking with officers saying, look, we could revolutionize army training if we do it all inside computer games. And that was like the, you know, the Tom Clancy game, at the, like Tom Clancy's the first one. Uh, and, and the Rainbow Six games, you know, it was like, if we do all of our military training playing Rainbow Six, then it's going to be fantastic. It didn't really take off. They thought I was insane. But uh, I, 
with the new versions, it, 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 is, it feels so realistic and they look incredible. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to use Warframe for realistic military. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, definitely. So, sorry, maybe I... So you're saying you were talking to some military person and they were sort of like having the idea to do that a was, lot of simulation-based it, 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 was, it, was it was my idea while I was in the army. Oh, you were there. Uh, ah, okay. and, and I was trying to convince my superiors to well, to give me it's... a load of money to do it, and they and they weren't they weren't keen. They were talking this is many years ago, and nowadays yeah, and it's, exactly. it's, was... it's normal, I mean, isn't it? These yeah, days, yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Nowadays it's uh, is normal. I I remember when I worked at uh, Crytek, um, and Crytek has not only been doing games; they also did some uh, realistic uh, stuff and. Um, I do remember that they were also, I don't know if it's still ongoing or not, uh, but uh, they've been having something with the U.S. Army where uh, back then uh, they were sort of like having um, some, you could say, you could call it a game, uh, but obviously like a simulator uh, where people are supposed to spot uh, these IEDs. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you sit in a vehicle, you walk, like, drive uh, down some street, and you're supposed to kind of like, okay, where could be some danger potential, like some trash can over there? Uh, like, I, I don't know how useful it really is uh, in real life, but I thought it was interesting when I heard about it. For, uh, we got, we got, we got two um, military. Uh, seasoned professionals in, in the chat. We've got Night Shadow in the US and Fresh Meat Canada. Um, and Night Shadow is saying that they use a sim room. You hooked up your real M16 to this machine and run simulations of situations. We did that for real training. And Fresh Meat says, we did the same idea called SAT SAT. Uh, I, I, I heard that in my, you know, the kids in the UK, they, they sit for their SATs uh, exams, which is completely different. Um, so you've You've, you've done Crytek. Before you went to Crytek, how did you get the job at Crytek in the first place? Because I mean, were, were you straight out of university, you know, college? Um, exactly, I was. So my situation was that I was um, in Germany. I was learning, uh, in German, we call it an Ausbildung. Oh, yeah. I know that. So in, an Ausbildung. <laughs> In Ausbildung means you're working. Um, it's it's like a shared uh, thing where you both going to college and you're working in a company. And I was uh, for three years. I was uh, learning how to be a so-called media designer. Um, at least that's what we call it in, in German. If you translate it one to one, uh, media design for print media. And so I was doing that for three years and I was working in some company that was uh, basically making, uh, yeah, print media for all sorts of things, like a lot of uh, like advertisement stuff and so on. And uh, it, I had to learn a lot about typography. Wait, is that the word in English? Typography? Uh yeah, well, you're, well, you, yeah, you're making, like, you're making the yeah, fonts yourself. Making, yeah, making text look good. Yeah. You know, like if you, uh, so print media stuff. And uh, I'm just gonna say I absolutely hated it. <laughs> it was, and and the reason was that ultimately it was advertisement stuff that I was been that I have been working on. And at the end of the day, I was looking back at it and I was like, okay. I've been working my whole day on some stuff that people find in their mailbox and they're going to put it straight into the trash can. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and the only good thing was that because of these three years, I was getting a bit familiar, only a little bit with a Photoshop. So I really enjoyed messing around with Photoshop in my spare time. And then around that time, uh, Counter-Strike Source uh, came out. And 
and so Half-Life 2, Counter-Strike Source, and all these things, and also Day of Defeat Source, which I absolutely, I still love it today. Uh, I mean, I, I love all these games still today, but uh, these were the games back then that I, I was just playing nonstop. And then um, I found myself in that situation where I saw like people making textures for it. And, you know, uploading it on different websites and basically customizing the uh, the existing textures for Counter-Strike. And then I thought, like, wait a second, how do they do that? And once I learned that it's because of Photoshop, I really, I, I had to sort of learn it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to customize textures myself. And then I... I did like a ton of textures for Counter-Strike and Day of Defeat Source and I uploaded it to different websites. Most of them are already gone now, I think, unfortunately, but uh, it was super successful. Like I saw like thousands of downloads for my, my textures all of a sudden. Wow. And then one day I got an email from a company that said like, hey, we really like your textures. Uh, why don't you come down f uh, and have an interview with us? So basically at that time, that was already after these three years where I was both studying and working at this company. So I, I was actually at that point of time, I was unemployed. So I was like, holy uh, moly, you know, holy crap. <laughs> uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be. I'm going to be interviewed to be working at a game company. This is the, it's like, this is the I dream. didn't even, yeah, it's the absolute dream. And then I came down there, that game company, it was called uh, Agony, uh, if I pronounce it, Agony, yeah. And yeah, I remember that. They, yeah, they're not around anymore, yeah. unfortunately, but uh I was there and I was absolutely blown away by what they shown me. It, like they were working on a first person shooter game with the Unreal 2 engine. And um, I, I couldn't believe that they invited me. And I was, I was like, okay, this is my, my calling. This is what I have to do. And they showed me around. And then at the end of the day, I was, I was driving back uh, home and one week later, unfortunately, I still didn't hear anything back from them. And then I was like carefully reaching out like, uh, so what's what's the deal, guys? Uh, and then they were saying like, oh, yeah, uh, so we really like your texture stuff, but your lack of 3D uh, modeling skills um, are not working out for us. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, because I had zero, absolutely zero 3D modeling skills back in, that was like 2000, uh, 2004. And then they told me like, learn 3D and come back to us. And then that was basically where it all then uh, started. Like, like I, I immediately looked up some... Uh, you know, like, how can I learn 3D? Because back then there were no tutorials or anything like that. Um, or like almost non-existing how to learn 3D on the internet. So uh, fortunately, um, I, I was talking to my mom uh, back then. And, you know, I wasn't even thinking about it. And then one day my mom calls me and like, hey, you know what? I found something. There's this college. Uh, it's in Munich. And they do 3D and video game uh, stuff. And uh, so wow. basically, I have my whole career to say thank you to my, uh, my dear mom because uh, she found this uh, college somewhere uh, online. It was a brand new college. And uh, a few weeks later, because <laughs> the, the course, uh, the semester was almost about to start. Oh, like, wow only two weeks and, and so I drove down I had a quick look at it and next thing I knew I was working in that college and I was learning for one and a half years uh, how to do uh, 3d modeling and and right after that I got hired by Crytek wow yeah. I hope I hope you give your mom uh, you know when you were younger you, you were giving a lots of mother day 
presents and birthday <laughs> presents. You know, uh, my mom always said uh, on the Mother Day occasion, um, skip the whole Mother Day thing as long as uh, every day is is sort of Mother Day, you know? <laughs> So <laughs> skip skip the mother's day. As long yeah. as I don't have to pick you up from jail, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. My my mom was was never keen on this whole like Mother Day uh celebrity thing once a year and oh you're so special. Uh, I, I, I on this one you said this on one, this day. one occasion of the year. <laughs> Give, of course, she'd prefer to have it every single day, which makes sense. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And so this is the message I got as a kid already. And I was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So uh, as, as an adult, do you carry that over into your relationships? Like is every day, do you treat your yeah. significant other every day <laughs> special? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's how it should be. It makes exactly. sense to me. Exactly. Good lessons there. My parents were the opposite, says Night Shadow. They didn't want me to play games or make them. I show them all the times how happy I am. See, that's the thing. Um, my my parents were were bizarre in that um, my mum wouldn't allow us to own a console because you couldn't program on it. She said the only getting the computers because you you're going to learn how to program on them if you can program on the computer and you can make your own things then then you're allowed to have them so my brother started making his own computer games when he was like five years old he started programming in on on basic on, on a spectrum and, and, and i would just mash keys together and like you know do go to line 10 hello and uh, you know you're looping hey mm -hmm. I've, made, I've made a never-ending loop uh and if I showed them, like, you know, what what job would you like to do as you get older? Oh, I want to make computer games. No, you're going to get a real job. But you told me my entire life growing up <laughs> as a child that I should be learning to program. I mean, yes, so you can be a doctor. <laughs> it makes no sense. It's, so my parents yeah. were bizarre. They encouraged oh, me, but then this probably decided that they were encouraging me to do the wrong things as yeah. a child. <laughs> uh, no it's you know it's sort of like this mixed bag uh, for my parents too because um like let's just say they were never really too keen on me um like adoring or like playing these uh you know i i grew up with doom and i grew up with counter strike and all these games where it's always about uh, killing and uh destruction and um uh, command and conquer, uh, dropping atom bombs and all these things. And my, my parents were not really fans of uh, seeing me basically consume this nonstop. Uh, so uh, I was always having like a hard time to explain that uh, this is a, it's a lot of fun, um, which probably they just you know, <laughs> couldn't was even more to. worrying. Goes, How can you enjoy yeah. this? You, you... Couldn't really relate to. But uh, once I had my job in video games, I think this is when it all changed. You know, like uh, you came because, home with the with the, ch with the yeah, paycheck. You go here. It's you go. Just, yeah, it's just a different thing then. So if you if you, you came home and put and put the money on the table and were like, this is this is now. <laughs> How you get money doing it? Well, it's complete. It's yeah. a completely different thing. No, no. I mean, I get it. You know, like my my parents are like pacifists. I mean, most people are right, or at least in Germany, a lot of people are uh, post-war and all that. Uh, so anything that has to do with like weapons and so on is sort of like seen as, you know, um, sort of like raises these questions like why. Like, why do you, why are you always so, uh, what's with all these guns and all that? And uh, so there's, there's always been this, uh, but I always had this fascination for it because I, I grew up with, you know, with like Terminator and Rambo and all these movies. So I, I've been hooked on anything like, that produced that was produced by Hollywood in the 80s. I those were my heroes, Arnie, 
Sylvester Stallone, you know, all these dudes back then were my heroes. And we were playing in the woods. We were making our own guns out of wood. And uh, what are they called? Pine cones? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the those, grenades. those were the grenades. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those were the grenades. So we were already, yeah, it's it's been like sort of this thing where we just had a lot of fun. And now, and now you're making them in 3D. Yeah, you can, and I'm still you, doing it today. Yeah, exactly. I'm still doing it today. You know, I, I guess it never got out of my system. Still enjoying it, even <laughs> though I don't. I don't even own a weapon. You know, I was gonna say, have you have you bought yourself a 3D printer so you can 3D print your own guns? Uh, great question. No, I don't have a 3D printer. Um, it's definitely something to think about but i mean i had my uh like i have a bunch of friends that have the 3d printers and it's a great thing it's really cool but it's it's just not so much really on my uh, something i need to do right now but never say never maybe one day you should do it uh, we've got a lot of people in chat who are uh, 3d printer hobbyist and they keep oh, yeah? warning me nice. it's a very expensive uh hobby and actually uh we had we had in chat earlier when i was looking at your uh daggers from uh warframe that they were saying that they they want to print them out um oh yeah 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 3d printing guns is definitely not illegal it's exactly it's definitely oh. not illegal it's perfectly fine as long as it's not you can actually find 3d printing of uh of, of working guns that if you modded them would you'd be able to make a gun out of it yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's legal which is insane yeah you know it's 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 yeah it, it's perfectly fine as long as you can't actually get the final components uh which when when i was a kid I, it was all cowboys and indians uh for me and i uh, were running around with uh with, with you know the cowboy guns and i still remember getting uh because we used to get proper metal you could not like kids nowadays with the plastic stuff you know proper hard physical metal guns and the feeling of it in your hand as a kid going pow pow shooting yeah is was, was, was great exactly exactly same for me as a kid like i i remember walking in toys r us like uh which also existed in germany back then oh wow uh, and you, you basically it almost looked like you walk into a gun shop yeah. uh, when you go to the weapon aisle so these are the things that when you grow up with that as a kid uh it's it sticks with you and i remember that was always i was drawn to it like the the moth to a light it's like oh Look at all these guns and, uh, you know, like you, you have like these little rings that you can put into a revolver and they make these like, Oh yeah. I remember the little cap noises. guns. Yeah. The cap guns. Yeah. It even has like the smoke coming out at the, at the barrel. And I mean, no, I used to, I used to be scared of those cause we're like, Oh, they, it's really, it's going to explode. So instead as a child, I used to chew on them. So I'd be like, <laughs> like it makes much more sense. Like, are you shooting your cap guns? No, I'm just going to chew them like sweets, <laughs> which might explain well, how I grew nice. up. <laughs> What's happened to me? You've, I mean, your guns now that you've been making. I'm looking and I see like as used in battle in player unknowns battlegrounds. You're yeah. So you, th th these these are the guns that you've got available on the Unreal and Unity. Uh, stores. Uh, yeah, exactly. I like what you're looking at right now is my Gumroad marketplace, and that's where basically uh, is one marketplace out of many where I sell the same thing. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it's compatible with the Unreal Engine. Uh, and with uh, Unity, and also I made it uh, uh, sort of compatible with the. I mean, the, I, I say compatible. What what that means is I exported the textures so that it's easy to just basically plug them into Unity, Unreal, and uh, Cry Engine. And uh, Cry Engine has now also is now also compatible with uh, Lumberyard because Cry Engine. Um, got bought by Amazon. 
Uh, so it's, about, it's, it's 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 still not it's quite it's their own it's their own branch of it. And we're getting raided by Royal Flush. Thank you for the raid, buddy. How have you how have you been? We're talking with seasoned AAA industry artist Tim from Shamford Zone, who's been at uh, Ubi, Crysoft, Ubisoft, every soft uh Crytech <laughs> we worked at Digital, what they called Digital Extremes, who worked, who, who, who I did, I never knew yeah. their name. I just knew, I just knew of all, 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 yeah. all, 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 all. Digital Extremes. And yeah. it's, it's funny, Digital Extremes. Um, I mean, obviously they are known for, uh, like Warframe, right? This is like, they're the Warframe, Warframe guys. A lot That's of people it. have, yeah, those they are the Warframe guys. But little is it known that they are also the guys that are responsible for the original Unreal Tournament. No. Yep. Shut the front door. That's there my favorite go. game of all time. Hell yeah. Unreal Tournament. So I, I, I used to mod, I made a Wild West mod for Unreal Tournament, which is bizarre seeing as I don't use Unreal now. Um, so that's that's crazy. Yeah. So. Um, I don't want to spread any half truths because I'm also not like I, I would have to read up Wikipedia again on the history. But um, as far as I know, back in the day, uh, they were working as one company on Unreal Tournament. And at some point, uh, from what I think I heard, uh, they basically the team was about to say, we want to go to the to the US and the other part was saying like no we want to stay here in Canada and this is how basically um, Epic was then born and wait I, I hope I'm not saying anything wrong here <laughs> but I, th th this was like there was this separation going on where all of a sudden uh, like okay we we are now digital extremes over here and there's Epic over there Oh, and wow. correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, I hate if I have to look that up tomorrow and it's, it's all wrong, but something like that happened. I, 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 uh, I believe every word you're saying. Yeah. Okay. It, so there, there was something like that going on where uh, they were working on Unreal Tournament as one. And then later the, it was sort of like this split thing where now it's Digital Extremes and over there is Epic. And uh, they are still great friends. Uh, so... That's pretty cool, actually, because a lot of people don't really are not that familiar with this sort of detail of the history that they share. Amazing. Does that mean that now that you've worked at one place, that you, you you can lean on them to get some contacts to show your portfolio over at Epic if you if you wanted? Well, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I, but the thing is that like I've been working in video games for over a decade now. And the thing is that the it's such a small world that after a while, if you work in like bigger places like triple A, uh, and then you move around to another place, there's always someone that, you know, worked at place A and place B. So it's, it's like this very, connected world which all of a sudden feels very small in video games so i know pretty much like a few persons in any game company like wow i yeah it's it's really like that like you, you just <laughs> so if i some... if i want a job somewhere i'm gonna phone you up and go tim buddy how you been yeah uh, like... can you phone up your your friend yeah like for example uh, it's software, right? I mean, legendary place. There's so many people that work there that I know because uh, at some point they started hiring a lot of uh, Crytek people. And um, I don't know exactly the, the backstory why, but there's a whole bunch of people from Crytek that are now working at uh, uh, it's software. And I think it's because they it's software started I think they had like a, they opened up something in Frankfurt, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I do know that um, also... a lot of people at, at Kuwaiti got, got let go when they were closing down uh, departments and they, they made 
after they made that um that cowboy game as well that a load of the artists who work on that got got let go uh, recently cow, as well. cowboy game yeah you know the 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 the, the cowboy game set in the weird date with the demons what's it called oh the hunt that's the one wait but um, so actually i mean i'm friend not of, a friend of, with yeah but it's still it's still being worked on no yeah a friend of mine told me at the time that after when it first the the team was reduced in size drastically so i don't know um, if how many people got left let go or yeah well that's... apparently it's quite common that you could be brought in to work on a game uh once yeah. it gets released then they only yeah. keep a, a percentage of the people left that's a bit unfortunate uh, of course i mean always like downsizing and um it's you know it's it's like a thing that unfortunately happens uh, in the industry uh so there's there's always that and yeah unfortunately also crytek it was pretty much after i left the company that they were closing down um a few uh, studios that they had acquired uh, like a few years before because they they were growing really strong and fast but eventually they were getting into some financial troubles i believe and they had to downsize again so this is how uh basically it's a cautionary yeah, some... tale of uh have uh, con like or natural controlled growth don't have eyes bigger than your belly um and it, it's I can't, that game who made those wonderful telltale games is that what they're called who made those amazing uh oh yeah yeah games. the walking dead yeah and then yeah. they basically had to make so many games because they just signed deal got the deals to do to make oh, 50 games at once and, yeah and I, you know made no, not a single decent game and, and all of the games were clones of themselves and in, in a studio which is it's it's we could see yep. here as a as a consumer playing a game and, and moaning about it but then you always have to remember that those studios have got real people who have got lives and families and mortgages to pay and these executive decisions can really uh devastate yeah this is uh this is always uh like the same as in any industry or in any line of work there's always the of course the yeah the, the it lingers there like you can get you can get laid off and the the problem is with video games is there are not usually that many video game studios in you know like there are other jobs so if if you get into that situation where you're getting laid off then it it can sometimes mean or in in i would say in most cases that you really have to move somewhere else right unless maybe you happen to live in let's say montreal where you have a whole bunch of different studios and you can just basically uh apply next door for the next job but uh, in most places you don't really have this situation so it's always unfortunate when things like that uh, occur yeah. has the asset store not been that much of an impact as a as a passive income or a secondary income to you or has it or has it been? um no in in fact it has it's been really good uh, which is also i guess uh something that um, for me, I, I quit my job at Digital Extremes last year. I haven't mentioned this uh, in that stream uh, so far, but uh, I've been self-employed since last year, um, end of last year, and yeah, definitely the like the asset store. And it's not only Unity. I'm selling my stuff also on like you before you were seeing my Gumroad page and I'm on CG Trader and there's a whole bunch of different places where I have my stuff. And uh, this was of course making it easier to say like, okay, I'm, I'm making my own thing, which is what I always wanted. And what I then 
pulled through with last year. So in my situation, uh, I, I'm definitely comfortable, uh, but obviously not every uh, 3D artist in the industry has sort of like this this kind of a setup that I have where I'm I'm selling 3D assets and most importantly, I'm having my tutorials. Uh, so I, I, for me, it's always been this thing. I wanted to be, um, do my own thing. And now last year I decided like, okay, it's, it's now or never. And the tutorials, are, I mean, a lot of us know you from Shamfazone on the Unity Asset Store, but your tutorials are your main thing that you that you focus on rather yep. than the assets themselves. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, you know what? I'm going to be back in uh, 20 seconds. <laughs> that is the shortest toilet break I've ever <laughs> Okay, heard. make it 30 because I don't want anyone to have the stopwatch. <laughs> Just make sure you wash your hands because it takes 30 seconds to wash your hands now, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a very good point. And then I'll, I'll be talking more about this because that's uh, interesting stuff. <laughs> All right, so while while Tim's um, gone to the little boys' room, are we going? Hello, all the raiders! Um, thank you for the raid. I, I did mention it at the time. Well, flush, but I'll give you a far bigger one. I saw I saw that Jim Davison uh, is banned from your version, and and we scrolled up to see that it's Big Break. You're actually doing you're doing the Big Break game. I'll have to check that out on your vod buddy. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure I ever recall Miss Red being part of the big break, but uh, you know what? I know it's not fashionable to like Jim Davison now, um, and, and people who 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 are offended by Jim Davison um, may have only known him from uh, like the the BBC quiz show era, Jim Davison, where he was doing Big Break and uh the generation game but he was highly offensive long before that which always amazed me that he managed to, to even get those gigs but um so so i, I as even even as a youngin i'd be like i'm not going to get offended by jim davison now because i should have been offended many years ago so i'll just uh let him i won't let him tarnish the memory of the generation game and, and big break from from what i was watching as a kid I'll, I'll keep that in my memory box but then they say don't revisit old memories don't go back and watch old tv shows don't go back and play old games because your memory is a lot kinder than reality was so, so that is that well we'll have to check out because as with everything will flush does manage to to have his own unique take on reinventing classic quiz shows and if you haven't yet visited Royal Flush uh, please uh, we had a shout out earlier I'll never link if someone can give another shout out to Royal Flush in the chat generation game don't pretend to be younger you know it was it was, that's the thing. I was I was a Bruce I used to watch it with Bruce Forsyth but um, I also do recall Jim Davison because uh, he was a uh, you know the um, he, he had a very a uh, good pre co-presenter with him on the generation game i remember with fond memories tim how was your how was your break oh it was excellent <laughs> thanks has, has all the beer gone through you <laughs> <laughs> yeah speaking of let me pour another one <laughs> do no, you get good, good beer uh, in canada yeah you see that's actually something really interesting about canada which is that we get a lot of german beer here it's it seems like if you go to the we we call it the lcbo over here wait what does it actually stand for again i gotta <laughs> look that up i think liquor something but lcb If people are wondering the liquor who, who, control board of oh, ontario there you go. yeah so this is the only place where you can 
legally buy alcohol. There's another one that's called uh, the beer store. Yes, yeah, so well, first we just, just written in chat the beer store. So yeah, is you can only buy alcohol from the beer yes. store or man. When when I first got here, it, it was really it, it was really weird like to see that you know like i felt like why the hell in germany you can buy beer at a gas station like yeah it's, you, just, it's, it's, you know it's, like you just, anywhere you go to the co-op or that's insane yeah. oh no Late, Fleshby says you can get it at the grocery store as well yeah, lately they've been opening that up you can now also buy at certain selected uh big grocery stores like but it's it's uh, very selected and it's a bit of a strange thing uh, but yeah, in general, you have to go to that LCBO and, the, but you know, after a while you get used to it and mine is just like two blocks away from where I am. So <laughs> it's never been a big deal, <laughs> but, so, but the thing people, is, people actually find their apartments to live on the, how close it is to the beer stores. It's like, no, I can't move here. It's too, uh, it's not walking distance from the beer store. <laughs> Uh, it's it's uh, it's not so bad, but the the thing is that as much as I would like to buy more Canadian beer, you know, like to support the the local breweries and all that, but it's expensive, man. It's like a free dollar a can, and you know, I'm used to pay like fifty cent for a can in Germany, <laughs> so it's it's a lot, and uh, so. I usually end up buying the the German beers because those are two dollar a can, and I, I mean German beer is known to be good, uh, so I I don't mind just basically continuing drinking German beers, much as uh, Canadian beer is also good. A lot of uh, lots of uh, Canadian microbreweries here, but if I have to spend one dollar more per can, then I think twice, you know. Wow. So, I usually end up drinking my uh, my cans of DAP. Wow. Uh, big big is... Gamey says in chat, it's only been the past few years where ours is no longer a dry town. You used to have to go to the next town to buy alcohol. I didn't even know that was a thing still anywhere outside of uh, the Middle East. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Oh, my word. Uh, that's crazy. Don't they have a Lidl or an Audi in Canada? Because it should be every Lidl and Audi that you go to has got some bizarre, really cheap, um, not like non-branded German beer for like 50 cents or or, 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 the, or the like that tastes, you know, bizarrely not bad. You know, like you'd assume like, this is so cheap, it, sh it should taste disgusting but it's it's good yeah yeah no it's i mean i try to drink less less and less because i've been sort of you know i came to the conclusion that i've been drinking too much beer um almost every day <laughs> so at some point i was like okay I got to cut down my beer consumption, but you know, weekends and so on is, uh, is a different story. It's okay to have a six pack, uh, in the fridge. And so on for breakfast, mm -hmm. uh, German purity laws mean that their lowest quality beer is still pretty good. Ah. <laughs> I, I lived in a country uh, where it was cheaper to buy beer than it was to buy bottled water previously. And the drinking water in the, from the tap wasn't uh, wasn't advised to drink, so I you know people found themselves drinking beer as an alternative to tap water because it was actually cheaper. Uh, which, which, nice. <laughs> which reminds me of the olden days. You know they used to you know ferment mead and stuff because you couldn't drink the the the, the water. So it was safer yeah. to drink, you know, your, your mead and things. Uh, that's what, so you, so that people didn't die of dysentery. So there you go. Um, happy happy conversations there. You know, um, drink beer, drive to the um, to the beer store, 
and wait till you get home before you start drinking it and sp save your money on buying assets from the asset store if you want to pick up <laughs> some some guns but not only that um as we mentioned just before tim had his 30 second which was timed perfectly by the way apparently chat timed you and you came back on the 29th second um yeah you do tutorials paid and free tutorials as well yeah that's right uh, so i don't know if that would be the the good time for me to basically take over with my screen share yes but maybe that's where we could tie into that so basically i'm gonna uh show a bit around the kind of things that i'm doing ever since i not only ever since i left digital extremes um and do my own thing now but i already been doing that for years uh before so i've been working on both uh, the tutorials as well as my 3d assets while i was both still employed at ubisoft and then later at digital extremes and it's only been um like around half a year that i've actually been uh fully self-employed now and i would definitely be happy to share with everyone watching um what i'm doing here in my sort of like uh yeah as a self-employed guy now and for that um let's see how that works here with the screen share actually let me get the right window open first yeah make sure uh, it's, not, it's nothing that's going to get yeah. us arrested one sec yeah <laughs> all good uh, so we have this okay perfect and then yeah okay and if um we're talking about all these tutorials um, well, actually, Tim was kind enough to to offer one of the uh, his tutorials that we're gonna we're gonna be raffling away. Ladies oh yeah, yeah, is that uh, exactly? So I'm I'm gonna talk more about my tutorials, but exactly, there's going to be a raffle where if you are interested in learning 3D art, which I'm going to talk about why this is um, this might be something. Uh, worthwhile for anyone watching and I guess because you are watching this stream uh, you're probably uh, already familiar with uh, video game art and unity asset store so textures and 3d models is nothing that is unheard of to you and uh, if you are curious why it's like how to do these things, you know, how to put stuff on the Unity marketplace uh, and essentially how to also learn how to create 3D art. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown now. So let me share my screen and we're going to have this raffle before I forget to say it. So I think are you, are like you, how uh, many people are watching? Let me see. We've got, we got uh, 5,000 people at the moment. <laughs> uh, Got a question for you? Why your why your? Uh, I can't see your screen, by the way. Not yet. Um, oh, okay. One it's sec. um. We got a question. Is Marmoset Toolbag like Substance Painter? What is what is Marmoset Toolbag? Yeah, great question. Wait, let me see. Where's the screen share thing? The the, the the square with That's the arrow. And to think, Wait. we practiced this ah, earlier. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. We, we rehearsed this before the beers. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was something. There was something uh, there. Here we go. OK. Uh, Screen. Nash fan says the new mama set is like Substance Painter. Oh, nice. There OK. I can, see, I can see your beautiful face now. Is now. Hang on. I put that two. tap. There we go. Uh, let me see. Where's the um... so? Yeah, basically. Okay, let me make that big. Okay, right. let me go. I want to just see on the second monitor. Where's the? Let me log into Twitch because I don't even see. I had it up before. Somehow I closed it. Are you? Oh, okay. Are you? Are you? Are you going to tell me that you're not even following me on Twitch? No, no. 
Did I'd you click that? Get... Did you click that follow button? Um, right now, I'm not even logged in. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit. <laughs> okay, I see some people. Uh, there we go. No, I've seen it before. I closed the tab somehow, so now I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so we have the Unity Asset Store here. And obviously, this is also why Messi reached out to me. Uh, for anyone from my Discord uh, watching um, or anyone in general. So uh, Messi is someone uh, that reviews uh, assets that are put onto the Unity Asset Store. And he reached out to me to find out about the weapon pack here that I had on a sale just a couple of days ago. It's been on sale uh, like a whole bunch of times already. So whenever these sales happens, that's usually uh, when my cash uh, register uh, starts <laughs> making sounds. Uh, aside from these sales... Oh, wait, why do I have this? Ah, I can put that out there. There we go. Um, so aside, yeah, don't click the report this profile button on your own profile. Ah, okay, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't intend to. I was just gonna put that out of the way. So, the weapons pack is basically. It's what, not cheap. Is what I'm gonna say. It's basically. Yeah, it's, it's basically it's not, not cheap. It's not cheap now because it's not 70% off like it was uh, a couple of days ago. <laughs> now, do you, um, you've got your weapons pack used in um, a plethora of indie games out there. Yeah. Uh, and, and as we've always identified, it, it's also used in PUBG's Battlegrounds. Do people, right. do you notice that people are buying your pack only during the sale or are you getting good traction no, no. normally? No, no, I'm getting sales uh, both uh, in the sales. Obviously, this is when it's like peak sale time. That That's the nature of these sales. But I'm also getting sales outside of these times. And you have to take into account that these weapons that I have up here for sale are um, not only bought by like individual like persons or like really small indie studios, but it also happens that they get bought by like bigger places. So I do get uh, sales throughout pretty much every month, but absolutely, yes, um, most of the sales happen when I'm featured uh, by Unity uh, here on the front page. Uh, wait, why do I get that window now? Uh, <laughs> That's right. It's the, sure. it's, it's the teams. So you, yeah, like you, you can a give, couple days you can ago, give me control was... of your PC and I can take over and start using your PayPal account. Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. I better I better don't click. <laughs> yeah, don't click, don't click the give control. <laughs> That's the most dangerous, no, dangerous thing you can do to me. <laughs> I'm just wondering how I get that out of the way. Uh, uh, I think it just will go away by itself. Is it? Well, we, we would hope eventually okay um i mean we we chatted briefly uh you and i um about your guns because um, uh, one of the questions that comes up and it's just come up in chat now they're not animated they're, they're the models but are they with the separate components so that somebody could animate yeah. them okay this is a great question and in order to answer that, um, I just want to like, let's take a quick jump here into, for example, uh, Blender, where I have like this is not the best example here, but the way that this works is all these weapons are not animated to like, give a simple answer to that question. And the reason for that is that I don't, I don't know how to rig. I don't know how to animate. I'm a 3D artist. So I'm concentrating on making these 3D assets look as good as they possibly can. And because I know um, how to, uh, basically, I know due to my job as a 3D artist working in the industry, I know how the, the people that do the rigging, 
and the animations what it requires for them to be happy, to give a simple answer to that. So if you buy this weapons pack, then you would be required to rig them and to animate them. Uh, so that's basically the simple answer to it. Uh, and also the, the thing is that if I would sell these weapons with like, let's say some arms that, that hold that shotgun here and a reload animation and all that, then this weapons pack gets sold like, like on every sale, like the one that I had the last time, it got, it got sold like a whole bunch of times. Then every game that would be using this would look the same. Like uh, you would recognize the animations like, oh, wait a second, I've seen that in game A and game B and game C. So it's, you know, you don't really want to have this kind of a scenario where your things look one-to-one -one like the other game. That, that comes so, to your difference of, cl of client base. If you're, if you're a studio or a team of people and you've got the skills and you've got the money, to animate right. and rig these yourself, then then that's a, that's open to you. But like we've got uh, in chat, Yoni saying the fact that they weren't animated is why he didn't go into that on the sale was was the only reason that he didn't pick them up. Um, and a couple of other people in chat saying that they, um, they missed it in the sale. But well, um, one question we've yeah. got is: Would you ever collaborate with an animator? Like if you've got these on sale, for example. Two hundred ninety-nine dollars. Would you work if somebody came up to you and said, "Hey, I'm a rigger and an animator. I would like to rig and animate your guns and sell them with you as an add-on. You know, like the animated version of these." Yeah. In in general, I'm I'm open to that idea. Yes, uh, but the the problem is a little bit that, like right now, I you know I have. Like Chamfer Zone here is my own company. So I'm one guy and I, so it's a bit difficult if like someone else joins in and then I'm gonna say like, okay, first of all, how do we split the profit? And secondly, how do we properly actually make sure that you get, let's say we make 50-50, like how do you get 50% and I get the other 50%? So there's, it's not so simple to say just like, yeah, I'm going to collaborate with someone and then we're going to sell this on the Unity S store because this company right now is, is basically, it's me. And there, to bring in like uh, someone who makes the animations, it would mean like to have basically uh, another employee, if that makes sense. Yeah. So there's already like, this side of the story that is a little bit problematic and then um secondly there's what i just said that uh with the animations it's a bit of a like my way that i look at it uh, is that the the people that buy these weapons and there's a lot uh, of them like seriously like there's a lot of studios and games that have these weapons in it um, that they prefer to have their own um, animations uh, and basically they get to buy triple A quality weapons here which they then can um, have their own rigging department and animation department to make sure it looks sort of unique because most people wouldn't even recognize that these are the same weapons but uh, that is essentially what's happening here. And um, maybe that is also a good moment to open up like a few games that I was just bookmarking earlier yeah. because oh, yeah. right. for me, it's always interesting. Like, you know, the, the funniest stuff happens. Like, for example, so <laughs> don't don't blame me for it. If you're like Austrian and I'm not... <laughs> I'm not a fan of Conan Zeitung, but it's like it's like something where sometimes I want to see like okay, what does the garbage uh, uh, boulevard press say about certain topics? So just earlier, I was on here. I'm browsing down 
And then I'm seeing, wait, wait for it. Here, I'm like, ground branch, a new tactical shooter, early access hope. And I'm like, oh, hang on a second. That looks like a game that maybe uses my weapons. So this is how then next thing I do is I look that up here. And next thing you know, it's something from Microprose. Like apparently, micro, you, know, you guys heard of Microprose, right? Oh, yeah, right? yeah. They, they, they sort of apparently... Are they, I didn't, are they still going? I didn't, I didn't even realize. Yeah, I didn't even know it. They got reactivated. Wow. They sort of like, they relaunched and there's some people that, uh, you know... Like they have some of the OGs because like one of my best friends, uh, he's also on my Discord, by the way, uh, one of our admins on the Chamfer Zone Discord. Uh, he's been working on uh, Microprose in the in the original days, and he just uh, recently confirmed to me that uh, one of the original creators of Microprose uh, is is a uh, part of this new um, relaunch of that company now. Oh, good. So, and, so the, it, it's so, not like some kind of cash in someone just bought the name. No, no, apparently it's not. And so one thing leads to the other. I saw this uh, this article here uh, and then bam, I click on that. All of a sudden I'm on Steam. And next thing I know, uh, here's a brand new game uh, with good ratings from Microprose. And they got... They got... Um, your, your guns. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Where is it? Bam. Let me go back. And Let me uh, see. Night Shadow says Escape from Tarkov that, uses your weapons as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'm, I'm not sure because I do always take a close look. But here we go. We have the ACOG. The rest of the gun, not. But this here is the ACOG scope that I made. And by the How way, for anyone, you own scopes? It's mental. Yeah, and by the way, for anyone watching, if you go here on sketchfab.com slash chamferzone. Sorry guys, I should be logged into Twitch so I can send That's why one of the admins will, will, will one of the mods will post it, don't worry. Yeah. But basically but she, if you do, do if you go here <laughs> what? <laughs> Just telling someone to do come on, fresh mate, post. You're a Canadian. You've got a fellow Can you've got an honorary Canadian needing your help. Uh, Microprose made <laughs> some of my favorite games of all time. Exactly. I've got loads of um, old games. Um, I've still got the boxes for Microprose. On my Spectrum, even. Um, so that's pretty. Yeah. Cool. yeah, man. Microprose. Legendary. Absolutely legendary stuff. So now they're back in the house. And apparently they uh, chose to buy uh, the weapon from me uh, or the weapons pack. And even if they only use like one part, you know, like for them, it's not like a lot of money. Maybe they even got it on sale, <laughs> like 70% uh, off. And all they <laughs> took from it was this uh, scope that I made, you know, uh, because here you go. This is, um, this is the scope. So for me, it's always really highly entertaining to to go through these games that I see popping up on Steam and zoom in on the weapons. And then I'm like, ah, there we go. It's my scope, you know? So, oh, so awesome. essentially, yeah. Thank you, Bob Dub, posting a link to your sketchpad in the chat. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Um, there was a question earlier that I missed. I forgot to ask you. Yeah. Um, have you used the engines that your uh stuff's in like have you have you tried the crytek engine and the unreal engine and the unity engine to see like how does it differ for you in you know the, the quality of these engines um well yeah of course i mean i'm familiar with all of these engines and uh the simple answer is that they all look great they, they, they all look great if you know what you're doing. And for example, I'm going to jump into um, to Unity here. So for example, this is basically the content 
uh, that you get when you buy the weapon pack. Like these are all the weapons in the pack. And right now it's not really looking, you know, that attractive because there is nothing in that scene. There's no light set up whatsoever. So you just get basically the standard uh, lighting here to illuminate these uh, weapons. Um, but that goes for any engine. So if you know what you're doing and you're making your own game, then basically all the uh, well-known engines nowadays, uh, they, they can look absolutely stunning. So it's really a matter of knowing what you do, you know, like having great artists on the team, um, having someone that's that knows their stuff with like light information, like putting the cube maps in the right place, like all these things. And uh, that's basically as simple as that. I got um, first meet saying I want all of these and I'm kicking myself for missing the damn sale. And I'm just going to rub salt in the wound that Full price, $299. Um, you would have got this at about $90 on well, the sale. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. But, okay, let me just say, um, from now on, and I've been, like, i already been started doing it before, but uh, I'm going to have a sale uh, that's basically the same as with the Steam sales. Whenever there's a summer sale or winter sale or whatever they call them. They have a lot of sales throughout the year. I'm going to do the same thing uh, with my weapons um, on my personal um, manageable on your gun marketplace, which is uh, this one. So on here, you find the same stuff that you can also get on that otherwise you would buy on Unity because on Unity, it's out of my control when they have sales or not. I mean, you can put the price down yourself, but it's not really the same thing. Um, well, so they let you they let you change the pricing. Like, to, I've act, oh, actually, no, tell a lie. They're now doing um, personalized sales. They started with like limited asset publishers like uh, Cinti Studios. And I think uh, Infinity PBR did a did a, a, a sale on there so you can do they're, they're going to be doing uh, allowing publishers to do their own sales on the, but but then even if you were doing it on their site you're losing the 30 percent revenue that that um unity take how much do gumroid take of, of a percent? um you know it's an excellent question how much exactly i should actually know that considering that gumroad is my number one source of income um, but because I'm so terrible with these kind of things, I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you right now. I should have, I should have looked that up. It's, it's uh, your number one source of income and you haven't looked. I love well, it. You're just like me. No, no, I, <laughs> I, I sort of r roughly know it, but I don't want to give wrong numbers. I'm, I'm too, uh, too much of a particular person that I want to just throw out some number and ah, then someone comes Love back it. like, what? You're, you're so wrong, man. What the hell? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, oh, well, I, I, just, I just gave you wrong information as well. Sap Furchak just, just clarified it, he, he believes it's personalized sales only for launches. So if you were launching a new gun, you could have a burst. You could set, set it up with a personal uh, launch sale. Like, uh, this is the new gun from Shamfer Zone, and it's on sale for uh, you know fifty percent off for the first couple of weeks. Uh, so there we go. A question to you, Shamfer Zone: Did yeah. you swap over to Marmoset from Substance Painter, or do you still use both? Okay, yeah, that's a that's a great question. Uh, so um, no, I. I wouldn't say uh, that I switched over and then I get that question a lot and it sort of like ties into the next thing that uh, might be worth uh, getting into now because so far we've been mostly talking about these 3D assets that we're looking uh, at right now. And uh, these are the things that 
I, I hope I sort of like answered like uh, some of the questions where people were having. I know some people are not happy with the animations that they are not there, but I hope you can understand that I'm just like ultimately one guy and it comes with a lot of like question marks if I start having someone else uh, doing the animations for it, which then would always look the same. But yeah, long story short, to get back to the question about where do I make my textures in, I would say right now I'm still uh, on the Substance Painter wagon, even though in my latest tutorial I was showing how to do textures in um, Marmoset uh, Toolback, which ever since Marmoset Toolback 4 came out, now allows to uh, make also textures in it. And um, let me just see where is, I thought I had it opened earlier. What, what uh, did you just... find? Uh, which we, um, which I will clarify is in the Canadian military, by the way. So he's in Canada, yep. he's in the military, he drives tanks, he can find you. Um, I've noticed some imperfections relating to your gun but i work on these daily <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you know i get that a lot because i i guess you don't have the real physical gun in front of you while yeah you're it. it's you know like yeah first of all there's that and secondly this weapons pack uh it consists out of uh i don't even like 21 weapons or so and yes i am aware that there are there might be some imperfections here and there. I'm trying the, the best I can do to avoid that, uh, but uh, it can't be ruled out. Uh, so these were also done like years ago. So th this has been a while actually since I've been selling those. Uh, so like just to have like a little bit of an extra excuse, <laughs> but um, <laughs> And on top of and that, I, you could say they're intentionally different so you don't get sued. Uh, there you go. There's that one. Um, Nash Fam asks, "What about the sci-fi guns? Because obviously we've seen your work on Warframe yeah. and that you know your your sci-fi games guns on that um, the amazing what was it called the uh, the, the amazing, amazing mission? Eternals. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, the sci-fi guns you had on that were were beautiful. Why aren't you releasing sci-fi guns on the stores? Um, because I, you know, I, I'm not really the, the person that loves to come up with their own concepts, you know? So I, I'm more like a realistically, uh, drawn to person or artist. Uh, so for example, this AK here, which, by the way, you can download for free. Like, if you need an AK in your game, then you can download this one here for free on the Asset Store at Unity. So this is like something important that uh, I uh, that you probably already know, uh, or maybe not. But it has like a ton of downloads. As you can see here, it has 2.6K positive ratings. And a lot of people uh, have this AK to basically just see what it's all about uh, before they buy the asset pack. So this is sort of like my recipe, the same one that I also use for the tutorials. I like to have high quality stuff that is entirely free. And in that case, I thought like, okay, let me put that AK up there. And then in the description, I'm basically saying like, okay, and if you like that stuff, then consider buying the rest. So which, which 3D uh, software are you using then as your, as your 3D modeling tool of choice? Because you've got your Blender tutorials. Uh, you said yeah. that work made you use, um, you know, right. the ZBrush. Now, so, to, just to remind everyone, you're, you're not the character modeler who who makes people and then rigs them and you know it's it's yeah. the props and the vehicles 
That's right. So basically everything that you see, like this is my portfolio here. If you want to check it out. Oh, uh, did you make that person right? with the armor? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's really I'm cheeky, sort of... Tim. No, no, man. <laughs> I mean, look, the bow is closer to the camera. That's uh, that's that's it. <laughs> no, no. I just I really like this uh, this particular image, so I put that up there. But no, I've been in charge to make this bow here, and I'm a weapon artist. I'm not a character artist by any means. I think uh, I'm not trying to. Uh, to dilute anyone that I'm a character artist. Anybody that knows my stuff knows that I'm not. But uh, especially on Warframe, they had like these really cool renders. And it so happened that this one here in particular was having my this bow that I made. So I'm like, OK, this is my new uh, background picture for now. I change that around sometimes. Um, but basically, uh, to answer the question about which software I'm using, um, it's important to point out that basically everything that you see here, everything is all 3D Max, 3D Max, 3D Max, 3D Max. And it's been only until last year that um, my good buddy from Digital Extremes uh, who's, by the way, uh, also happens to be like one of the admins on um, the Chamfer Zone Discord. But yeah, my buddy Enrico was like, dude, you got to learn Blender. Blender is so awesome, man. And I've been always like very reluctant in general as a, an artist to learn new stuff because I'm a little bit like you know, once I really like something, I stick with it. And for the longest time, I thought like, okay, I'm going to stick with 3D Max. 3D Max, because that's my thing. That's what I know. But then Blender came around with the um, Blender 2.8, the famous 2.8 update. And that's where they basically started to look like a serious... Uh, oh, sorry. Blender. <laughs> Was that the beer? Let me see. Blender 2.7. Okay. So this here is something that to me doesn't look appealing. Okay. Blender is uh, so, the devil spawn. Let's just put it. Let's just yeah. say it as it is. De De Blender this, is the devil spawn. So this is how Blender looked for the longest time. And nowadays... They maybe it was as simple as making a dark theme for it, you know. <laughs> but ever since dark theme fixes everything. <laughs> ever since two point eight came around, now it looks like this, and it's gorgeous. And by the way, I have the Maya, um, I have the Maya theme on, so it looks a little bit different now. But I, to now, my mind, I had a friend of mine at uni uh, who would only touch Maya uh, like you know yeah. when we'd be like you you need to be using Maya um, or you're not gonna make it in the real world you know it was it was, it was his was his motto it was like you, you're, you're living in the past man you need to you need to get in with the Maya that nowadays I don't really hear that much talk about Maya uh, bizarrely it's well you don't no I don't I hear more people talking about um, how 3D Studio Max uh, hasn't changed in the last 50 years. Apart from they did, although Chris for, was at Fur Travel will remind me that they did a, a recent update. And he's also, I am totally hating on 3D Max at the moment. Should I make an extra effort to switch again before my license renewal comes up next year? Mm -hmm. It's crashingly, yeah. it's crashing constantly. Oh. Okay, so I just want to say that, you know, there's always this this hilarious thing where people make such a massive big deal out of it, whether you're using software A or software B, you know, and it's almost a little bit like there's this fence where people wonder like, wait a second, are you team Blender now? I thought you were the 3D Max guy. Because <laughs> I just read, you know? Champazone is a Blender boy now. Yeah. I just written in chat. And 
because I've been for the longest time known as the guy that makes the 3D Max tutorials. Uh, I almost had a little bit the feeling that to some people it felt like it's betrayal. the highest, the highest form of betrayal. Yeah. You know, like now I'm Dirty doing this. I mean, not really. It's it's not like I at two I, Tim just, at two. Like, What's that? You know, at two Brutus, it's, it's Julius Caesar being stabbed by by his mate. You know, it's, <laughs> how could you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. how could you, man? Uh, no, so there's always this <laughs> funny thing where but people it's free. think Tim, it's free. Blender's free. If it if it does the job as good as Max or Maya or or the rest of this stuff, or you know. Lightwave or or, Imag or Imagine three D on the Amiga. If it does as good right. as all of those, why not use it? Because it's free. Is it, or is there something missing from Blender, which, even if you were to move over to it, you're not going to get the same functionality that you might get in your three D Studio Max. Um. Well, yeah. There's always things like that, but you know it's it's a little bit of a give and take so there are scenarios where you if you're like a long-term guy that like for me i've been working with 3d max for 12 years so of course it has been like not the the easiest thing to just switch over to like okay now i'm using blender so there's always things. It's like riding like a, or you're driving a car for 12 years and all of a sudden you switch to something completely different and uh, or like a new car and you miss like, okay, this car had the button in that place and damn, I'm missing it so much, you know? Yeah, but Tim, so, with, with your car analogy, are you now, did you trade in your car, your BMW for a tractor or have you just traded in your BMW for a Volvo? um yeah that's no that's a g great reference to ask for and um for me it's more like you know it's like mercedes versus bmw they're both great you know wow so blender is yeah. actually uh, yeah man blender is is really that good it's and it gets better and better every day so it's not about not anymore about like Oh, there is this free software kind of a thing, you know, like it's like the cheap version of 3D Max. It's not that anymore. And I'm, I'm going to already say it like the tutorial that I'm working on right now, it's it's going to bring some awareness to that because I'm really proud of what I'm currently working on. It's and it's going to make people sort of like see it, like especially people that followed my previous tutorials, which were all 3D Max based. And speaking of which, like my like the tutorial that I've that I'm mostly known for is my best seller is the weapon tutorial. So I, I yeah, I, I couldn't come up with a better name. So I called it the ultimate hard surface weapon tutorial. <laughs> So, but this thing is like the most bought, uh, like on my marketplace, um, the most successful tutorial. And this is basically how it all started with my, my business, uh, Chamfer Zone. And I started like teaching people, how do you make like a weapon, um, like that is really triple A quality stuff. So this is how it all started. And now I'm working on the next big uh, thing, the next weapon tutorial, because there were other tutorials uh, that I have released since I did this one. But now comes the next big thing. And it's going to be not for D Max, as you see here, it's going to be Blender. And I can already say it's going to be a good one. And I'm not making this to sort of like, oh, there's going to be like this contest. It's 3D Max versus Blender. But <laughs> I'm saying like there are a lot of things in it that are going to be sort of like unique to Blender and make it very interesting for anyone to to follow in this excellent software, which we can download for free and to really 
also be able to point out the difference, especially if you are, if you already followed this tutorial. So there's a lot of good stuff in it that you couldn't at the moment, at least do with 3d max that you can do with blender. And basically that's that. And now I hand the mic over to you because <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, I've been told in chat that I need to stop being anti blender. I'm not anti blender. Now I'm anti blender of what it was. Um, um so so yeah the it, it's it's different than you know it's it, it, and to be honest i've i've tried i've tried to remember because i'm looking at that tutorial your weapons tutorial the last time right. i made a 3d weapon and i found the website using the wayback machine okay just yeah. now so i've gone and, and and found the wayback machine uh has has got it um, a link yeah. to my, an old website that I made, a World Mess mob for Unreal Tournament. Um, and I'm trying to find uh, a picture of a gun. And it, my God, it was, it was terrible. So anything that you can do nowadays with modern tools, I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare Blender now to to you know what what it was when I I think the last time I used Blender might have been no. ten years ago, as I'm, as I'm, you know that. No, it's man. I I gotta tell you, like I absolutely love Blender, and I was if if there was anyone that was skeptical of Blender, I was it because I I'm a very skeptical person in general. <laughs> I'm. I'm not easy to be sold on anything uh, to to make an effort and say like, okay, I'm going to be 100% open-minded and I'm going to be learning a new software because for me, learning something new, ironically, because right now I'm basically a teacher, right? With my business. I'm a teacher, uh, but... Do, do been... you get educational discounts though? Uh, educational discounts? Oh, good point. Maybe I should, you should apply. reach out. Yeah, yeah I, I got to look into that. But my, my point is that um, I'm hard to be sold on something new. But in case of Blender, fortunately, uh, I felt like, okay, this is something people are really interested in nowadays. And maybe I should also start looking into it. And then there were also like, um, you know, other YouTubers that are well known um that were working or like do things with 3d max or still do and they were also starting to look into blender and i kind of felt like okay i guess i should also start looking into this kind of a thing because there's just a general interest for it so with like an initial uh skepticism of it i found myself like really liking it and now it's it came to the point where i'm like okay there is nothing that I uh, that I couldn't do with Blender uh, that I can do with 3D Max. So it's sort of like this thing where it became like, okay, I guess I can just use Blender, and it's it's a great software. It looks great. I love the UI. I love the tools. It's it's excellent. Free. And that doesn't mean yeah. I mean, free is, a, free, free is an important thing. Yeah, exactly. It's free. And it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, like if people worry like, oh, but what does that imply about 3D Max? Like it, it doesn't imply anything. It just means that uh, now we have another uh, great software, you know, it's as simple as that. And I really look forward to sharing my next tutorial because it's... Uh, When's it going to be? Oh, th this is always the question that I really can't give uh, an answer to because <laughs> it's, oh man. It's dangerous. It's really difficult to make a prediction. I'm, I'm working on it nonstop at the moment. How long does it normally take you to make a tutorial? Uh, many months, many months. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I, I put like all my... Uh, my, what do you say, Heart blood, sweat, and tears yeah. to say it the Churchill way. 
uh, into it. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, it still takes many months. Even now that I, I thought like, okay, I'm going to retire at Digital Extremes. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to quit there and I'm going to do my own thing. So I should be way faster now with the tutorials. Yeah. But no the reality excuses. is. Tim, there's no excuse. I'm, what are you doing? Yeah, I know, right? But it's, it's for some strange reason, it's still taking forever. And this is just the problem because, I mean, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but the reality is I'm, I'm too much of a perfectionist. And it sometimes really comes biting me in my bum, bum. arse. Is that allowed to say? Yeah, you can say it. Let you say it. Okay, great. <laughs> and so it sometimes comes back to me and where I find myself really, I have to record the same thing over and over and over again with the screen recording software till I'm like, okay, now I'm happy. <laughs> and, and then sometimes it's like two hours later and I'm still working on the same thing. And I'm like, damn, I didn't even make any progress yet. So it's a very time consuming process, but overall at the end of it, as long as I do make the process, I know that is as good as it can be from my own point of view, you know? Mate, I, I can't wait for your lesson. Uh, cause I, let me send you a, uh, it, I, I send, open it up on another, on another browser, on another win monitor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cause I, I, I think I'll end up doxing myself, uh, releasing my, People will be able to find my personal details from it if they if they use their brains. Uh, so here's here's my gun that I made twenty years ago, when which was the last time I made a three D model. Right. So this is this is twenty years ago. I made this uh, near enough to the day. So I, as as you can see, I I really need a tutorial. Wait a second. Where do I see? Uh, oh, you're sharing the yeah on the Discord. So open open it up on another screen. Ah, okay. Okay. There you go. One sec. Hang on. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. I I disconnected my microphone cable, so <laughs> you do sound a bit different. No, no, I'm all there good. You go. You're back you in again. Okay, you you were showing something. Uh, what was it? So on your, if you so, check your Discord, yeah, check your Discord. I made that 20 years ago to the day. So I desperately need. Oh, my Discord. Yeah. Okay. A, a DM. I send you a DM. Uh, so I I desperately need you, uh, your lessons. Right. So we. Oh, gonna... I love it, man. <laughs> this is great. You know what that reminds me of? There used to be this game, and I swear, if anyone watching right now, and it's not it's not that many, I'm, I know, but if anyone knows this game, is Outlaws from LucasArts. Oh, yeah. That was a, that was a oh, you, you remember that? Yeah, I love oh, that. Oh, man. Yeah, I love that. Oh. oh, man. This is like this game. Oh, it has a 9 out of 10. There we go. Didn't even know it was on Steam. But oh, they didn't even have 3D models. Never mind. Or maybe no, that's a no, new. What, they, that's, they, wait, they, what the hell is that? They, that's the new. Yeah, they, yeah, that's the classic. That's the original. That's the that's the one. But even those, they Shoot were the actually 3D models, I believe. That was before my time as a 3D artist. Well, uh, I'm not but, sure you were born then. Were you Were you born when that game came out? Well, yeah, unfortunately, man, long time ago, I'm not that young. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, why? You think I'm? Yeah, you were, you were, you were young with the snapper. Old, old uh, loss is not old. Old loss is uh, 1997. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is I, that was, no, I, would, I was 16. 16? 16? Uh, oh, okay, you've given yeah, away your age. <laughs> uh Zap Fur Trapper, um I was making a Wild West uh game before Rainbow Six 
came out actually um yeah so uh, I, I i actually started i've i've made a wild west game on every uh machine that i've owned so i made one on on my spectrum i've made a wild west game on my amiga i've made one on a pc uh, i tried to make one using unity but we all know how that ended uh and instead now i want to play with chamfer zones uh big weapons and and throw some grenades so that's that's the plan I wasn't even a twinkle in my daddy's eye. In 1997, you weren't even a twinkle in <laughs> your daddy's eye. Oh, my word. Yeah. That's crazy. 1998. You're in 1998. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if anyone... Those were the days. There was like another one of my all-time favorite first-person games around the same time. Um, here, good old. Oh man, that was the next. Dark Forces. The next oh best yeah, thing. that was great, man. The next best thing okay, after Doom. Ah, it was sort of for me. It was like okay, we had Doom, and now we have Dark Forces. And like as someone who really grew up with Star Wars, you know. Um, I'm not saying nowadays I'm a fan of everything that's uh, happening with the Star Wars franchise, but for me, that was like, ah, oh, it's, it's such a great game. I played it over and over again. And that was already uh, done in some sort of a 3D modeling software back then, for sure. I mean, just look at it. You still there? I am. I'm looking at it. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm remembering happy times. I wasn't sure if I plucked out my mic cable <laughs> again. Yeah, those were the days. Oh man, I would play that again right now. Yeah, I think yeah you, you it, can. Look at this. They did some good 3D modeling work on that back then. Even though basically they did all this stuff in 3D and then they put it in as uh, sprite graphics somehow. That's the funny thing. Well, I'm. I would, you know, love to to see your take, your modern equivalent of these classic games, but you need to be making more sci-fi guns. Mm. Well, I'm not ruling anything out, uh, especially as far as my tutorials are concerned, because that's my bread and butter. Even though I'm actually making. Uh, more money on the uh, the asset store, ironically, like just producing these things here. I'm actually making more money selling stuff here on the Unity Marketplace. But for me, it's like a question of personal like satisfaction. What do I get out of doing something like all day long? And for me, it's hundred times more worth it to sell these or like not only sell these I make these tutorials you know um, then selling these asset packs where like I was showing before I never know where it is actually used unless I <laughs> like by coincidence browse on some garbage newspaper website and then like oh something new came out i mean it's still cool but with the <laughs> tutorials I, I like having both is what do, i want to say what? i i i get where you're where you're coming from about the tutorials i mean recently i've i've for, the, for i would say the last year or so i've stopped yeah. making tutorials on my channel i just haven't had the time um and i've recently gone back to doing one or two but i was contacted to say that one of my old tutorial series um, a group of kids in a in in a you know, young age, not old enough to be to be going to college, used my right. tutorials to make their project uh, for school, which got them a scholarship to college, the university. So it goes basically sent me a message thanking me uh, that he was <laughs> he would would sit listening to my voice 
watching my videos late at night uh, for, for weeks on end. Uh, and that's what got him his scholarship. And I was like, no, your hard work got you the scholarship to your university. Um, you know, you just I just happened to be someone you were watching. But is that right. feeling, you, you know, you don't get that same feeling from selling an asset on the store. You've educated no. somebody to, you've it, taught somebody to fish rather than giving them a fish. Yeah. You're hundred percent right. That that is exactly it. Um, so wait a second. Maybe I missed the part. Like so, you you're saying you also did tutorials. Yeah. Well, yeah. I did, well, obviously, the the nothing as sexy as yours. They're just you know the the base. They're the messy tutorials of how to do some game development. Yeah. Uh, and I know. And I promise that I am gonna start doing some more. I'm getting. I'm gonna be working yeah. on some some no, more. No, exactly. Never. Yeah. No. That that's awesome, man. I didn't know that. So this is exactly uh, like my point. Like there is so much more to to know that at the end of the day, you may have made like a difference in someone's um, life. You know, like just by purely learning it, and especially because I myself was in that position. Like when I started out. Uh, like learning 3d i was desperately looking for tutorials that was like back in 2005 and so on and there was just not so much around and then eventually like i remember like finding like one tutorial i like the other day i looked for it again it's not even online anymore but it was on some obscure website and it showed like how to make like a glock back then and I'm like, oh, damn, this is the best tutorial <laughs> I've ever seen. Like someone's really like showing me the way. So that was sort of like parallel to the uh, the college that I was visiting at that time. And I had the feeling that I actually got more out of watching this tutorial uh, on the Internet than the actual college itself. So, I mean, it, it was sort of like going hand in hand. Like a lot of people always think like, yeah, the, the colleges they are visiting, they crap. Like I visited like a co college myself. And for me, it's like it goes hand in hand. Nothing wrong with the colleges. So you can do both. Learn online, but also go on these colleges. And that's what I did back in the day. And it worked for me, at least. That's what I can say. Might not be for everyone, but uh overall that was for me like the thing where i was like okay this tutorial really made a difference for me and then years later i was thinking now i might be able to do the same thing paying it forward and and this is basically how it all uh, materialized and it's it's a great thing like and on my um what is it uh like the, uh, I'm trying to find the link where where all the, uh, let's see, face, no. No, actually, I don't want to log into Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate Facebook. <laughs> but I used to, I should do it again, but on another website uh, where I share, like, the results from the artists, right? Oh, yeah, nice. And so it's it's already a thing on the discord uh, i was gonna say i love Actually, your, your discord's amazing in yeah that. i will I, I forgot like so obviously we have it here on the discord and it's not exclusive to the tutorial results but we have like like here you can see someone followed the uh, flashbang tutorial so this is the kind of stuff you know by the way i'm absolutely awful to i should check more <laughs> But I'm so busy working on the actual tutorials that even uh, now that we have this Discord, and I want to say we, because the most important thing for me is that this Discord is not about uh, like me, it's about the community. And that is the thing that I'm really proud of, that we have like a place here on this Discord server where we come together and we learn 3D together because nobody is ever done learning and neither am I by 
no means am I ever done learning. Like there's so many people on this Discord that have like great input and that that are you know like a source of inspiration and learning something new. So this is just like the beauty of today's learning, nowadays learning, that back in the day when I started out, these things didn't exist, you know? Now you're lucky to get an IRC channel. Do you remember IRC? Uh, I, oh yeah, IRC channels, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah th those were the days. I, 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 we were lucky if, if, if we if we had that. Although, yeah, although no. Before that, it was um. I don't know if you had it in Germany, but we used to have uh, tally text, um, communities on the TV. So it was a, uh, yeah, that's a technology. Kids don't know they're born nowadays. But your Discord's lovely. After joining your Discord, I spent many an hour just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through the what people have been putting in there it's amazing stuff and uh fresh is posting a link to the discord in chat thank you fresh mate so if you want to visit chamfer zones discord click that in chat talking about visiting things let's yeah start Speaking giving away of which, i'm going to give away and yours as well yeah. like anybody watching uh, on my end uh check out uh, messy coders uh who i'm talking to right now by the way messy awesome guy thank you very as much everybody you've, you've knows thoughts, by yeah. now Check out his um, his Discord and his Twitch channel and YouTube channel. He does really awesome stuff here with these reviews. Good job, mate. Thank you very much. It's, uh, most of it is just me breaking things and mushing my face up against stuff. I tell yeah, you what, no. the, this, the last sale nearly killed me. Um, like that city builder, Urban. Um, yeah. Right? I must have loaded that project up in about 10 different versions of Unity to compare the differences of those. It was insane, uh, which normally, like, people, and I've had people like, so how, how much involved do you get in a review? Sometimes you, you only have enough time to lo do, do like an unboxing. So that is, is a difference. Mm -hmm. I, would I would call them an unboxing rather than a review. And other ones are a more in-depth review, uh, like even opening up the meshes and all the textures and going through them or going through the code. I need to get more involved in that. By the way, we've got a raffle currently open. If you want to win a copy of one of Tim's Blender tutorials, it's, what was it? Four hours long, oh, yeah. the tutorial. Oh, uh, is it? Is exactly. It yeah, four hour we long were, video. We were basing that on how many people are watching, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So okay so we have we have five yeah let's see we have um come around let's go back here so there here's the here's the thing we got five uh of these so what, what's the marmoset tool bank part of it so you is marmoset tool bank free by the way or is that paid do you have to buy it um so the thing with marmoset tool bank is it's it's a software that has for the longest time been known um, as like a real time rendering software. So what I had opened here earlier, this here is Marmoset Toolback free. And this is basically where you make renders uh, like this here. Once you like it, you can hit the render button and it renders it out in a better quality. That's the one that everyone uh, so, uploads their screenshots to go, look how beautiful my thing is. And, th and they think it's inside yeah. a game engine and it's not. It's actually, actually inside. Because, yeah. yeah, because essentially it, it replicates a, a beautiful game engine. This is basically the job of Marmoset. Um, well, it, and many and, times it looks better than it would do in Unity. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. because because everything is uh, sort of beautiful, like narrowed it? it's narrowed down to making it all look good in this like 100 percent brought down moment so you can really you can nail it all down to like you know if i press this here like change the lighting until it's absolutely perfect you know so 
it's the job of a rendering software, obviously, to make it look as good as it possibly can, uh, where if you have like another engine, you can also make it look absolutely great, but you don't have as much control as you have here, you know? So there's but, a lot of things. But now, but now you're spacing, so it, it's the equivalent of Substance Painter. So it's not just this renderer. Um, exactly, that's right. Uh, so this year is Marmoset Toolback free, and so far this has only been a software to that point at the uh, point free version where you were making your renders in. Now we are having Marmoset Toolback four, and in here not only can we make beautiful renders, uh, wow, that looks, that, that's the but beautiful. Yeah, in it they even increase like whatever they did now. It's it's looking even more beautiful. Uh, the things that they uh, put in there to make these renders look like almost like photorealistic. You know, uh, they not only did they do that, but they also added the texturing. Uh, so here we are. Hang on, let me load that. With Marmoset Toolback 4, where now we basically have the same or almost the same functionality uh, that we have in uh, Substance Painter. That's crazy. So, so but is, yeah, is, it, is it free though? Do you have to pay for it? Um, so, if you want to try this out, uh, you can get the one month trial version. It's free. So, you get to check this out. And if you like, this particular thing that you're seeing here, this flashbang grenade, then you can watch the tutorial for free on my YouTube channel. Oh, no, but is Marmoset Toolbag for free? Or do you have to pay for the Marmoset? Uh, no, Marmoset Toolbag 4 is not free. Okay. So at so the moment, there there is there, there are like a few software, um, or at least one that I know of, uh, Quixel Mixer. Yeah, oh yes. This one is free. So um, could we could we follow your tutorials for the blender part then and then use the Quixel mixer for the uh for the texturing part? Um you could, but you would have to find your own tutorial for it because yeah. well, you, I was you thinking... cover the blender as well though, don't you? So it's not just the Mama said. Yeah, that's right. So if you look at the uh tutorial uh, for the, this flashbang, um, let me just bring that up again. Uh, it consists out of two parts. And this is the, the recipe for all of my tutorials always. So basically, it's think of it of as two parts. Uh, the first is modeling everything. Um, in that case, it's Blender. And then unwrapping it. Unwrapping means to basically project the information of your 3D model onto a 2D plane. And this is then what we later gonna uh, bake our textures upon based on the high poly and low poly information that we create here in that part. And then we bake that stuff. And then with these original textures that we baked out, we texture uh, the actual thing. So that's where we put in all the information, like uh, this is supposed to be sort of chromey, and this is like some painted metal and so on. So this is basically the whole thing. Like, And in my tutorials, I'm showing you the exact things that uh, the same approach that we would be doing if you were asked to do it at Ubisoft or at Digital Extremes or Cryotech. Wow. Any, no, these or places, any... Is the resol size of the textures also, because you know you mentioned that you've for Digital Extremes for Warframe, you were limited to 8K poly models. But what about the textures? I mean, because like, that looks ridiculously beautiful, but um, I can just imagine that being a, a crazy 4K texture just for yeah. a little flashback. Well, let me take a quick look at this because I'm not sure. I'm not 100% um, 
familiar here with like Mamo said tool bag because usually I'm also a substance painter guy, but let's see if we are able to downscale the texture somewhere. Ah, right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, now some more. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, uh oh, it's gonna explode. It's oh. gonna explode. It crashed. <laughs> it crashed. That's a good advertisement for Mom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it, it still has a bunch of performance issues. I even pointed it out in the, the in the um, opening of the tutorial, <laughs> but it's it does have like some issues. But basically, if you are wondering like, okay, how does like this texture right now is 4K, okay? It's, it's really high risk and most games wouldn't have a 4K texture. And it would still look great in 2K. Like you would barely see a difference, especially if you're looking at it from this, uh, this perspective, you would barely see a difference. And then if you scale it down to 1K, you would start seeing like, okay, maybe it's a little bit blurry along the lines, and then obviously, if you put it down to 512, this is where it's like gets all mushy and stuff. Uh, so like for Warframe, uh, basically we had everything that you see. Let me take a quick look at it. It's always 1K. Oh, wow. Even though my renders are higher than that. Mm. So this, this stuff here, because it's renders, you know, I get to show it in the the best possible way so it's 2k but everything that's in the game like this weird looking thing here this uz uh is that how you say it uz uzi i say uh, uzi nine millimeter uzi. yeah kill uzi. you yeah <laughs> so <laughs> because it's a because it's a third person uh, game, you know, that's why it's the 1K texture resolution. I love all of the negative so, reviews on the asset store whenever I see, and they go 4K texture not included, one star. And you're like, it, you're not going to use that in a game. Yeah, what are you talking nah, about? It's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, you know, like I see a lot of uh, people commenting that you can just tell, like, okay. I get where you're coming from, but it's sort of like you catched up on some uh, buzzwords uh, here and there, and you you kind of like think this is what it's about. But it, do you, do you know what? If I was selling stuff, I'd be like like um, in the Seinfeld episode, "No soup for you." Yeah, like you're banned. No soup for you. No asset for you. You're banned. You're not allowed to buy my games. Uh, you're still there. Can you? Oh, can you hear me? <clears throat> You lost you. Uh, there we go. You, ah, there, you're back. Yeah, you were back. <laughs> so yeah, I was saying that if I was selling my stuff, I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow people to buy it if they were like that. If they put a comment and be like, "No soup for you. You're banned. You have a lifetime ban from any of my assets on the asset store because you you're saying nonsense." Uh, and that's probably why I'm, I don't sell anything on the asset store. Yeah. Uh, let me. We got to announce the winners. We got five copies of. The oh. tutorial to give away. So the first um, winner is. Yeah, wait, hang on. Okay. Yeah, not only do we have five of this, we also have. What do you What do you think? What should we do? The Mac, two more. Who of of the bigger price ones? Uh, so we got five of this and two of the. Wait, my most recent tutorial before this one was the. This one here. Oh, that looks sexy. It's priced at sixty bucks. Um, there, there's also sales, uh, but so let's give away two of the sword and the maze tutorial, on top of the five copies for that. Oh, all right. So, it's the the five copies first. Uh, all right. Let's so let's do it. The first winner is Tim Spurgeons has won a copy of. The Blender Marmoset tool bag, bring it Blender for beginners. Well done, Tim. Nice. I actually was just talking about Tim the other day. Hasn't won anything for a while, and there he comes. Great. Sanyo has won a copy. Cool. 
Gaz Ross. Hit me up on the Discord. All the winners, you need to hit me up on your di on the Discord and make sure you're following. Thank you. Trailer. Black Mage. Black Mage. And the last winner of the five bucks beginners is Chris Zap Fur Tracker. Zap, who said, should he be getting into Blender? Well, now you can because you got a tutorial on doing it. So now we got two copies of the sword and mace to give away. Oh yeah, which I might have to. I, I I didn't enter the raffle, so I'm really annoyed that I didn't enter this raffle myself. But my wife told me off. She says I'm not allowed to enter my own raffles. But I'm like, I want to enter a raffle because you, you need to learn this stuff. The, the first winner is DE Environment. Oh yeah. And also oh, yeah. give me give me an exclamation mark DE. Uh, uh what is it? Unity DE? Oh, I, I forget. Uh in chat. Give me an exclamation mark. Um what, what is it? D if I can even find it. I've got a command for you. I've got a command. Exclamation mark uh DE Essentials, baby. The whole thing. That would work. Probably. Oh, exclamation mark DE Shader. There you go. That's the right command. Exclamation mark DE Shader in chat. And the last winner of the uh, the sword is Nash Fan. Congratulations. Nashville, 13. Congratulations. And by the way, guys, if you follow these tutorials uh, that you just won, and if you actually pull through with them and you feel like you're stuck along the way, always come and ask the questions on the uh, Chamfer Zone Discord because that's what this is there for among other things congratulations and that give it a lumber link uh we had it in chat let me find it and put it in chat because um fresh meat posted it earlier and barack but dub posted here we go shepherds on discord here's a link in chat thank you so much i mean this is this yeah, is nice. crazy beautiful stuff yeah, basically, this sword tutorial that uh, you gave out two, right? That's correct. Uh, you said yes. you gave out two. So this, this is basically everything that I learned when I was on Warframe, because I told you before, or I told here before, for in case someone wasn't joining in then, um, I had to learn ZBrush <laughs> when I uh, joined Warframe. Uh, so everything that I learned uh, during working on uh, Warframe, it's all put into this tutorial here. Like creating this sword is basically all the things that I finally had to learn because I was always hes uh, hesitant uh, to learn ZBrush. And all of a sudden I found myself forced to learn that. <laughs> And there we go. And not, by the way, not only do you get the sword tutorial, but it's bundled together with the maze tutorial. So you also get to learn how to create this here. It's a 3D Max and a ZBrush tutorial. So this is, and then don't worry about like, you heard me talking about Blender before, and now you might be wondering like, oh, but I thought you're working with Blender now. It's like, don't you worry. It's it's not essential to draw these kinds of uh, comparisons. Like, if you are learning one software, then you will also be able to adapt and understand the other one. And so it's not a really a matter of drawing some trench lines, but it's about like getting the grasp of things 
learning one software. And in that case, it's basically you're learning the craft of 3D modeling. And it doesn't matter if you do that in Blender or in 3D Max or in Maya or whatever else software we got out there. You just want to become aware of um, understanding the basic rules. So that's basically what this is all about. And I'm uh, happy that uh, we may have got some winners here that might also follow with the tutorials. Now I can't wait to see what, what you guys give them forget showcase. Showcase also on both Discord. Yeah. Showcase on Tim's Chamfer Zone Discord yeah, and also exactly. showcase on our one. And and yours too, exactly. We should um we should share that. I agree. So I want to see... I'm gonna be splurging on tutorials next payday. Exactly. Public chat. Let's see. Do people oh, what do they write? There you go. That's we were talking earlier about the um the the military training equipment. So there you go. That's what they're using in Canada. Oh right, right, right. There we go. Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I had no idea, but makes sense. Fresh Meat says he's saving up for the gun pack. Well, as a uh, as Tim was saying, um, there's going to possibly, might be, maybe, yeah. you never know, a sale on his gun world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is you know, like the sales. I I think my main issue is that I'm always, I'm always very shy. Like I know that Messi doesn't shy away from always pinging everyone <laughs> all the time. <laughs> because I'm on your Discord and I always see like these red marks like bang 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 ping 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 and i'm i don't know why maybe i'm too german for that but i'm always like i barely you know like there's huge time gaps where i ping people because i don't know why but i'm gonna put these sales and when there's a sale it's gonna be here in the announcement channel so i'm gonna have like I had here, here was a winter sale. Uh, and this is going to be a continuing thing that I will be doing um, regularly. Uh, same as the Steam sales. When there's a spring sale on Steam, you can expect there's going to be a spring sale here for these weapon packs. And other than that, there's also a CG Trader and Unity Marketplace and other marketplaces where they have their separate sales where I don't really have control over whether they do it or not. They just do it. Oh, that's right. CG Trader do love a sale. They do love a sale. And hopefully, yeah. you know, there's going to be a, a, another 52,000 Unity sales this year because we know how often Unity love to do a sale. It's uh, I, It feels like they yeah. do more sales than I have hot dinners over at Unity at the moment, which is yeah. <laughs> always nice. And and by the way, I mean, I just want to say for everyone that's uh, still watching, and I see we still have 32 people watching, so not that many people checked out yet, which is really awesome to see, uh, because that's the same number I saw earlier. Um, I just want to say that, like, I make these tutorials, but obviously I also want to get, like, encourage people to get something out of it and for most people the aim uh, or the goal that they have uh, if they follow my tutorials is to also be working at a video game company and there's this is obviously understandable like everybody uh, wants to work on or a lot of people want to work on game a and game b but another thing that people often overlook is that if you know the craft of doing these 3D models, then you can also always sell your stuff here on Unity Marketplace. And these, this should not be underestimated. There's like a lot of money to be made here on these uh, marketplaces. So it might be that you know, like I see a lot of people. Let's just go here on. Let's go on our art station. Damn. Let's go on the front page. 
And let's see. Let's just go here on weapons. So obviously, wherever it says like the name of a game, this is stuff where people actually work for the company already. But most people that put their stuff on here in general, and not only for weapons, for anything, they put it on there because they want to be seen. They like, okay, this is like my showcase and I hope that Activision sees it, you know, uh, and then they're going to hire me. And obviously there's nothing wrong with that. This is the, this is the one thing that people have their portfolios for, but also keep in mind that you can actually make good money putting these things on the marketplaces. Like, for example, let's see that thing here. Looks awesome. Does, so lovely. I hope that whoever made that also put it on on Unity, but it doesn't look like it. Or else he would have uh, like a link to it. So it's just like a random thing, right? And something like that would probably sell really good if he put it on, uh, if Gregory put it on uh, Unity Marketplace. So this is sort of like, Something that I felt like I wanted to mention uh, actually already earlier, but I forgot about it. But uh, this is uh, like if there's like one takeaway that I wanted to say is that it's not about just like, oh, maybe I, I got to do all this work and then maybe one day I'm going to get discovered by uh, some company. Yes, there's that too. But in the meantime, you can make serious money like selling high quality stuff like that here. If you put that on Unity or Unreal Marketplace, uh, or I should say both. CG Trader. Yeah, spam is so, a lot. You don't, you don't have to sign over exclusivity to one store. Exactly. Then Yihu reached out to me. Let me go on there. Yihu.com. There we go. It's a Chinese place, you know, and it's actually really big in uh, in China. And uh, let's let's see where if I scroll down here. Toot, 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 toot. Somewhere here I can be found. Uh, there we are. Here there you are. This me. So they actually were kind enough to reach out to me and ask me if I want to. Um, like collaborate with them and here's my AK tutorial on a Chinese website and it's uh, highly successful and they made their subtitles for it and uh, you can see the same weapons that already sell sort of like as advertisement material so it's oh man they didn't dub you I was hoping they dubbed you in Chinese that would have been oh, awesome. this is not the this is not the most favorable picture of me yeah, but, <laughs> uh, but you can see they did a really good job here you know like so this is great like and I wish that the this the same thing would have happened in the Russian yeah. case you need, you, need, nope. you need to get your Russian contacts working was it Chris yeah. uh, Zapfer tracker who makes neo FPS exclamation mark neo FPS in chat uh, says that he feels bad that he has not been pirated yet now it, 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 as a sign <laughs> that you've made it and that you're famous once you're pirated. Uh, don't worry, Chris. I'm sure you'll get pirated one day. Do you know what? Yeah. I'll pirate, I'll pirate it for you. <laughs> An internal <laughs> job. Do you know what I'll do? If it was because I've, I've heard about this, that uh, companies make their own own leaked pirate copies of games of studios so they will they will purposefully release uh pirated copies of their games that have been modified so that um you know certain parts of the game won't work or something you know. yeah i exactly know i heard all of that before and you know i've been in the beginning, like I said, I was trying to contact these places where I've seen all my uh, stuff uploaded to, especially like once it's on torrent, like there's nothing you can do. Torrent is basically once it's on there, it's, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? It's a torrent. 
But then there are also the particular the uploaded uh, services. Like you remember Rapid Share and all that, right? Uh, so there's like uh, all these file hosters. And I, in the beginning, I contacted them and I was like, can you please take that down? And and then like, okay, we, we only need confirmation that it's really you. And then you sent them that. And then basically three days later, they say like, okay, we confirmed it and we took it down. And uh, 10 minutes later, bam, it's uploaded again. So it's, it's absolutely hopeless. And like you say, like, I, I really see it like, uh, you know, yeah, it, in the way I arranged with it, I, I mean, obviously I can't change it. So, and if someone searches for chamfer zone on Google, they're going to find like, if they go on page 12 or 13, there's probably a hundred thousand uh, pirate stuff links, but ultimately it kind of spreads my name too, right? For my company. Exactly. It's, it is what it is. There's no, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Bloody Crabs asks, have you considered doing mentorships? Um, actually, yeah, I have considered that. And uh, it's something that uh, I, I, I don't rule out to do. Uh, but right now, I'm really, really uh, occupied 100% to get this next uh, tutorial out of the door. And like I was saying before, like if you would ask me if I'm like an old man, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I am already an old man, but if I'm even older than now uh, and I'm sitting in my, uh, my whipping chair and like sort of like, what is your masterpiece in life? I would say like, okay, there's the ultimate uh, hard surface weapon tutorial. <laughs> Uh, but right now I'm working on the next thing, you know, it's the next weapon tutorial and I want it to be as good as it can possibly, uh, possibly be. So right now I don't have time for anything else. Like I even got contacted like, uh, because people know like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing like a freelance or I'm not employed at DE anymore. So they've been asking like, Hey, you want to come do some webs for us? And I'm like, nah, sorry, right now I'm busy. So I want to make sure that the next tutorial, the one that I'm currently working on is really sort of like, it, it has all my attention right now. And after that, I can uh, consider things like uh, mentoring and so on. I've been thinking about it. Yeah, oh, awesome. I'm going to have to let you go to bed. Well, I'm going to have to go to bed. What's it must be the afternoon for you. I thought about say in Germany. Had you been in Germany, yeah. it would now be half past two in the morning, Tim. But you are in sunny Toronto. So you're oh, fine. Yeah, that's right. It's already 2.30 for you. Damn, yeah. man. It's, it's, it's 1.30. Oh, 1.30. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Never mind. It's fine. Uh, Black Major, I'm so sorry. I'm sleepy. I have to go to bed. Thank you for my prize. You're welcome, buddy. Uh, congratulations. I can't wait to see what you're going to make from your lesson. Gaz Ross, same snap. Have to head to bed. Really enjoyed the stream. Thanks again for the prize. Yeah. Congratulations again. Don't forget to pop over and show us in the Discord and show us over on uh, Shamfer Zone's Discord. You had a link and a link over on our Discord as well. Tim. Thank you so much for being popping in. Uh, you know what? We said it was going to be like a one or two hour chat. It's nearly four hours in and we could talk for another four hours. So I can already imagine how interesting and, and absorbing your tutorials are. I can't wait to catch them uh, and also to see if I can make a better Winchester rifle now, 20 years later than I did yeah. that first attempt. Absolutely. I, I love seeing that you also got into 3D modeling probably way earlier than I did, possibly. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I actually started as a 2D an, uh, animator and a real life 3D modeler with clay. And I was like, well, obviously, it will be exactly the same thing to do a 3D, mo 3D model in a game engine. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing. 
but some of yeah. those skills are transferable. But like you mentioned, if you've learned with Blender, you could transfer that knowledge over to 3D Max or Maya or, or, or something. It's, it's more of the principles that you're learning, especially, isn't it, with your tutorials? Uh, it's like the tutorials that I have uh, on my store is basically if you really want to learn, like if your aim is to become a 3D artist in the video game industry, then if you watch my tutorials, you will learn how to, how to become one. It's, it can be put as simply as that. There's nothing else to it. I, this is it. It's, it's the University of Chamfer Zone. There you go. It's right. It's the Chamfer Zone University. That's right. That's brilliant. Buddy, you have a fantastic day ahead. Have a great weekend. Have a fantastic Sunday. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the prizes as well. Yeah. Uh, and thank you too. And uh, yeah, it's been great. Thanks for having me. And uh, chat you soon. Yeah, or well, chat you again at some point. <laughs> I can't wait to have you back on another time for another chat. Yeah, I, I just see all the comments in the in the Twitch. Uh, sorry, I haven't paid attention to everyone who's been writing uh, messages on there because I was trying to be focused on the other monitor. <laughs> but yeah, cheers, guys! Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Oh, buddy. And thanks again, Messi. All right, Take later. Care. Take care. Auf Wiedersehen. Cheers. Yeah, auf Wiedersehen. What a lovely badger. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.